you guys are here with us. Uh, so we have an audience full of people. For those of you guys who are at home watching, uh, you guys are also welcome to uh, come live. We even have some service dogs in the room, so apparently you can bring your pup as well. Uh, so join us live. We meet every single Tuesday as part of Texas Rias in Austin, Houston, Dallas, uh, and San Antonio. We do market updates. We do our tip of the week. I'm kind of excited uh, to share with you the tip that we have uh, this week. It is uh, from a call that I got from an investor uh, just, uh, just yesterday, uh, an investor who was really excited uh, and uh, with the opportunity. So I'm gonna tell you how I helped her navigate that. So one of the things that I do as part of Texas Rias is help our members navigate their deals, uh, make the best of their deals and also not make mistakes, right? So uh, I wanna welcome you guys all to our training tonight. Uh, where we'll do a market update and present uh, tribal knowledge as well as uh, just go through uh, general real estate uh, knowledge and information to help you guys be successful. Uh, so excited to be with you all here tonight. And every week we get to showcase what we call our tip of the week. And that is one I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys. And I think what you all will love is uh, uh, building and growing your business, making fewer mistakes. And uh, the tip of the week is the exact thing that allows you all to do that. Uh, for those of you guys who are live and in person, so stoked you guys are here. For those of you guys who are online, you're more than welcome to join us at any of our future live meetings. So this is a list of the prior tips of the week that we have had. Uh, over the last uh, over the last several months uh, so excited to be able to share those with you all and uh, if you want to see what the background is on all of these tips again you can just check us out on our YouTube channel uh, or on our podcast uh, I know uh, there's uh, the Facebook generation the Instagram generation the snapchat generation the the TikTok generation and everyone thinks the last generation is or the prior generation is is, is a bunch of old farts so uh, I'm not sure which one you guys are in. Uh, for me, I love to listen to my podcast while I'm driving, while I'm working, because I like to have it stacked. I like to be learning and I like to be doing other stuff at the same time. Uh, so no matter how you guys like to get your information, we're on all of the social platforms. You can come and check out a lot of our prior tips of the week uh, just by going to any of our, ch any of our social channels. Ah, so uh, the tip of the week for today is uh, what I call favorite seller quotes. And I have so many of these, but I'm gonna go through some of the ones that I heard just uh, yesterday as I was talking to another investor. And these are some of the quotes uh, basically that she used. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lay them all out here. So when you are talking to a seller, are you always talking to the seller? No, you're talking to someone who maybe thinks that they have control of the house and maybe who does or does not have control of the house, right? So one of my favorite uh, things that I get to hear all the time is when I'm interviewing people and I'm talking to sellers, going through all of my questions and I've got about 82 different questions that I ask every seller every time I talk to them to make sure that I don't miss something and get surprised and punched in the face right before we're going to closing. So one of the questions that I always like to ask is who else is on title? Who else is on this deed, okay? Now, some people have, uh, uh, some sellers have what I call seller amnesia. Uh, some sellers have what I'll call um, uh, seller uh, legal rules. Uh, uh, and, and, and I'm sure there are many other euphemisms that you can apply here. Uh, probably one of my favorite ones is a, a particular property that I got to and the seller said, I'm the only heir. I'm the only heir to this property, no one else, okay. Wonderful, fantastic. Who's gonna be the judge of that? The, uh, the title company, the title company. Because the title company is gonna, gonna find your family tree whether you want to or not, okay? The title company um, is, is probably an investor in 23andMe and, and who's the, who's, who's the daddy.com, right? So the title company is going to find this out, is gonna find you out here. Uh, and, and you laugh, but this is true. So, so probably one of my favorite quotes from a seller is, is, is after we, you know, I'm the only heir, or me and my you know, brother are the only heir, 
get to right before we're supposed to close. And the title company says, well, who's this guy with the same last name and the same nose and the same teeth and the same eyes and the same hair, right? Who's, who's this fella? And uh, sometimes, uh, probably my favorite one is, is literally, and, and this is a quote, well, nobody ever liked that brother anyway. I'm sorry, I, I'm not an attorney, but I don't, think, I don't think that's part of the Texas legal plan. I don't know about you guys, right? Uh, another one has said, well, that brother's dead. Okay, wonderful, does that brother have children? Well, we haven't talked to any of that side of the family for years anyway. What does Texas law think about that? No, Texas law needs them to sign as well. So this is seller logic here, guys, and seller logic is not like, does not always abide by the legal system. Uh, that sister is in jail, right? No one's talked to her and, and, and forever. That sister moved away. Well, where'd she move to? Well, South Texas. Is that like outer space? Like, do, is that area not covered by law? You know, and the answer is no. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and no one liked that brother. No one talks to that brother anymore. Uh, they divorced, so this is another big one. Uh, so if you owned that property and you live there together, Texas is a, what kind of a state? Community property state. So we gotta have some signatures from the prior spouses, unless what? Unless what? It's, it, they're divorced, and the ownership of the house is covered in the divorce decree, and just can't, you just can't tell me, oh no, I got the house in the divorce, the title company is going to want to see that decree, and the title company is going to want that a notarized docu version of that. They're going to want that submitted so that they can have proof just in case the wife ever comes back and says, oh no, why didn't I get to sign off on that? That was partially my house as well. So the particular situation that I ran in yesterday, and this was really, uh, this was, you know, some, some, of, these, some of these stories in, in real estate investing, uh, is kind of like a telenovela, like, you know, divorce, bankruptcy, you know, alimony, child support, judgment, lien, you know, and, and some of these things go on and on and on. And, 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 and sometimes can be like, you know, interesting to, 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 to read. Uh, but, but so in this particular situation, uh, the, the other investor called me to ask for my advice and my experience with the situation. So, so uh, there was a gentleman, um, and in the last uh, two years, had a COVID romance. And as part of the COVID romance, the uh, girlfriend moved in with him, okay? And so the girlfriend is saying, well, I have you know, rights to this property. This property is now my property. Well, there's no COVID law that uh, covers that. That's not part of the um, stimulus package, uh, right? That you get your uh, COVID boyfriend's uh, uh, house. Uh, so so the, the investor was talking to, and, and, the, and she's like, get out, I'm not gonna sell this house to you. And at the same time, it, do you think she's making any payments on this house? She's not making a single payment on this house. So again, it's part of, the co her, her, part of her personal COVID stimulus package, right? So uh, then it turns out that the investor is, is talking to one of the daughters of, of, the, of this gentleman here who's passed away. And then, uh, and then she gets a little further into the story and she's like, well, you know, there was a will. And I'm like, wonderful, this will solve everything. Well, you know, in the will, it was, he wrote the will um, before he got the house and while he was married to his ex-wife. And in the will, he wrote his kids out of the will, and he wrote his now ex-wife into the will. Gets more interesting, doesn't it? What do you do here? Who's, who's, the, person, who's the person who she's talking to? The daughter who may not have any interest in the property. So, so but the daughter is trying to explain this away to the investor as if the investor is going to be able to close this transaction with title insurance and be sold to it by anyone who actually owns it. Fascinating, right? I could tell you story after story of people who will sell you houses who don't actually own them, including uh, probably one of my favorite ones. It was, uh, it was <laughs> this is, I mean, truth is stranger than fiction, right? Truth is stranger than fiction. Never is that saying more true than in real estate investing, okay? So, so uh, we found a property one time 
uh, and this is not listed on this, on this uh, set of items here. We found a property one time. Uh, we, were thought we were talking to the seller, wrote up the contract, sent it over to the title company. The title company said, who in the heck is this person who you, know, you signed this contract with? Well, they told us they were the seller. No, they're not the seller. I don't know. There's, there's, there's two brothers who own this property. Okay, so we called up the guy who we put it under contract with, and you know, what did the guy say? Well, these two brothers, one of them um, owes me money. Apparently, as part of a drug deal gone bad. Okay, so I don't know if it was like the headlock version, like sign here or what had happened here uh, so and then one of the other brothers was like in an insane insane asylum so these are the type of interesting issues that we you know encounter as real estate investors and believe it or not we got through that and got everything done and and you know we basically put drug dealer and and uh, debt owing you know uh, uh, owner son or uh, brother uh, into one room and said Here's the money you guys decide how you want to split this up, right? But we still had to have the owner actually come to sign. So through the stranger in fiction, uh, these, these are things that, that happen. Uh, these are seller, this is seller logic and some favorite seller quotes. Uh, they're going to sound very convincing when they tell you this stuff, okay? It's your job to be able to keep asking questions. It's your job uh, to, uh, uh, be, to continue to be curious. So I will tell you what all of these quotes have in common. They have nothing to do with how law works in Texas, right? And for us as a real estate investor, do we not want to make sure that uh, when we are closing, we're closing at a title company, we're closing with title insurance to make sure that our interests are protected in the property. Guys, you can close not at a title, and, and I wanna make sure this snippet doesn't like just get out just in this little piece, so I, I wanna make sure you listen to the whole thing. You guys can close not at a title company, you guys can close not at a, uh, with title insurance all day long, just understand there are incredible risk in doing that meaning you may not have a marketable title to your next buyer right so don't be rushed into a deal don't uh, fall into uh, and start believing some of this seller logic uh, uh, and 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 know that some of these things will create these big headaches right before you're closing and in fact they may completely blow up your deal especially if the deal has a timeline right with a foreclosure auction so probably what was I'm gonna go back to the first story not we're gonna leave the drug dealing brothers aside so we're gonna go back to the first story with the uh, COVID girlfriend with the heirs that were disinherited and the property that might be going to the wife right so uh, in in that story um, uh, uh, there there's a couple more details to it it's also going to foreclosure next Tuesday okay so there, the investor is calling the trustee and saying, hey, I need you to stop this. We're, you know, we're kind of getting all this figured out. The guy died, give us some time. So, so the trustee says, okay, but you have to get me these three things. I need a contract, I need proof of funds that you can buy it for cash, and I need to see an airship affidavit. So the investor's like, well, I don't, why would I give him an airship affidavit? The heirs might not even own it. The girlfriend's saying she has a right to it, and it might actually be the ex-wife's. And I'm like, well, you know that. I know that. I don't think the seller logic or the heir logic people necessarily know that, but the trustee does not know that. And what is the number one thing that we have to do when it's going to auction? We have to stop the auction, right? So yes, yes, sir, Mr. Trustee, I'm gonna get all this stuff to you even though I know this, is, this won't work in the end. As a real estate investor, we have to be going down parallel paths to be able to get to the end goal at the end of the day. So number one thing is to stop the auction. And to do that, we're gonna do some things that we may not end up using at the end of the day, but who cares? You guys follow that? And stopping the auction will give us enough time to kind of figure out what's seller logic, what's Texas law, what this will says, if there's another will, and all of these different things. Uh, so so uh, uh, just, just, just be aware of that. It makes, it, it makes real estate investing both adventurous and fun, uh, <laughs> even though it may not feel that way when you're kind of listening to the story right now. Uh, but uh, how do you prevent uh, a major problem? 
You have to ask really, really, really what feels like uncomfortable questions, okay? Uh, you have to be curious. Um, uh, you have to ask like, you know, well, if, if your neighbors were alive, you know, would they say that there were any other children? If your, you know, the, 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 you know, your pastor was still alive, would they say, you know, is there anybody else who might say that your story is incorrect, right? Or is there anything that if we were using 23andMe, you know, DNA genetic studies, we might find out that is, is incorrect here, because I'd like to know this before we go any further. Uh, and also, uh, you know, um, uh, tell, share, share the stories that I have. So one of the reasons why we share what we call this tribal knowledge is so you guys can be more powerful when you all are out in the field yourselves. You follow that? So if you can share this story where I was talking to another investor the other day, or you make it your own story, another property that I dealt with that was not dissimilar for, to, for, to this, we found out right at the last minute that there was another heir and it blew the entire deal. It would break my heart if you lost all of the equity in this deal because I wasn't asking the right questions. Is that a fair way to say it? I think so too. So, so ask those very uncomfortable questions as early on as you possibly can. So guys, uh, that is our tip of the week. I hope you found that uh, useful uh, and maybe terrifying and maybe both, I don't know. Uh, but we're excited to be able to share those tips with you uh, every week on what it's like to be a real estate investor. Uh, so how Texas RIAs can help you guys. Uh, for us, we learned a very long time ago that the more resourced you are, the more knowledge, what I call tribal knowledge that you have, the more successful you will be in your own business. Uh, and what we find is a lot of times investors are not getting the uh, information that they need because, and I'll ask the question, how many of you guys are at university right now? How many of you guys are at YouTube University right now? Oh yeah, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, but, but sometimes what I find is from, for people who are at YouTube University, you're getting your information for some wild and you know, fun and energetic and crazy guys, right? Uh, who can really like, you know, hold a mic and, and, and run a show. But where do they live? No idea, right? Where do you need them to live? Where you are investing, right? So stop taking advice from the guy who has a gazillion followers and start taking advice from people who are investing, living, and working where you want to invest in real estate, right? So. Uh, that would be my uh, uh, that would be my guidance and coaching for you guys. I don't want you all to uh, kill yourself uh, trying to figure it out yourself. What I find is a lot of brand new investors are playing uh, pin the tail on the donkey, right? You know, it's like they're blindfolded, they're turned around, and they're like, okay, go you know go out there. Best of luck to you. Uh, so we don't want you guys uh, doing that. Uh, we want you to leverage all the different knowledge that we've built up over this time so that uh, you can be more successful uh, and faster. So that's one of the reasons why we do this. It is also to um, continue to give back to this community. This community has been serving me uh, deals, opportunity, funding, knowledge, shortcuts. Uh, since I went, walked into my first Real Estate Investor Association meeting almost 20 years ago. Uh, so, so that's why I continue to carry the torch and give back. So uh, that's, that's how we can be of service to you guys. And one of the other ways that we can be of service to you all is every week we do a market update uh, and we share what's happening in terms of closed sales. Uh, in terms of trends and in terms of what to expect next in terms of the forecast. So welcome guys to this uh, part of the presentation, the market update. The first uh, part of the market update I'm gonna talk about is um, the, the roll up of all of the sales here in Texas. So there's a lot of data here. I'm not gonna go through every single item. I'm gonna highlight a couple things that I think are important. Uh, uh, specifically, in all of Texas, the average sales price sales price last month, 446,000. Uh, closed sales last month were down almost 2%, but still that's not terrible, but you know, a couple, you know, it takes more than one, you know, data point to make a line, but we may see some more data points like this. Uh, active listings are starting to increase, so that means months of inventory is starting to increase. 
However, uh, based on the amount of sales that we've had so far this year, I think Texas will still end the year probably up in sales somewhere between one to 3%, okay? Last year we were up 6.1%. I'm forecasting that our average price on average in Texas is going to be up about 20%. Uh, we are adding more inventory, but it's still nowhere near the amount of inventory for the buyers that we have here. Uh, for the Houston market, uh, sales price $440,700, up 14% versus where we were last year. Uh, closed sales, Houston's kind of pulling up the curve. Uh, so closed sales in Houston were, only, were down, but they were only down 0.9%. Uh, so when all of the rest of the United States is suffering, because uh, the price per gallon of gas is $5. Houston is doing <laughs> the happy dance, okay? Because all their oil executives are making a little bit more money, right? Uh, and they're in business, and this is a capitalist country. Uh, so they're all doing what they're doing. So, so it's, it's funny, when, when, when Houston's down, most of the other parts of the state and the country are up, but when Houston is up, it's usually from an oil and gas issue, right? Uh, so that's one of the reasons why in Houston you even see pending sales up. They're up 4% uh, year over year, and we are adding active more, uh, more listings in Houston through, and throughout uh, the other markets as well. Active listings up 15%. The forecast for Houston for the rest of 2022, sales should be up about 5% and average price up in the 15 to 20% range. For San Antonio, Texas, uh, last month the average price 393,000, up 16% versus where we were last year. Medium price 200, uh, I'm sorry, 349,000, up 24% versus where we are last year. Sales were down, but only down 2%, so still pretty strong. Uh, pending sales uh, are also down, so they're down close to about 10% versus where we were last year. And we've added about 1,700 additional listings uh, this time this year versus this time last year. Uh, the forecast for San Antonio in terms of total sales uh, as we end, as we, uh, we're right now at the middle of uh, 2022, but as we come to the end, uh, up 3% year over year. The forecast for average price up 15 to 18% year over year. For the Dallas and Fort Worth market, uh, one of the largest, the largest uh, combined market here in Texas, average sales price up 20% at 539,000. Uh, closed sales were basically flat year over year. So flat is, 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 a, is a wonderful positive word right now. Uh, uh, active listings are up 26%. Pending sales are down, but again, only down about 4%. The forecast for 2022 is that Dallas is gonna be flat. Last year, Dallas, in terms of total sales, was actually down about 1%, uh, but no one feels sorry for Dallas because they sold over 100,000 units uh, last year. The average price for Dallas up in the 18 to 20% range. Uh, just last week alone, I think two companies, uh, uh, or in the last month, I think two companies said that they were relocating uh, to the Dallas area. Uh, and going to be adding a lot more jobs. So what does that tell you about that market? It's going to continue to grow. Uh, Austin, uh, sales price in Austin, 683000 up 17% versus where we were last year. Closed sales were down. They were down 6.7%, so one of the biggest reductions uh, year over year. Months of inventory uh, is one of the uh, items that we track as well. So last year, Austin only had about a two week supply of inventory. Uh, right now they have a full a month and a quarter, uh, <laughs> which is uh, a big jump over what it has been uh, lately. Uh, you do see pending sales, uh, they are down in the Austin market, uh, down about 10% versus where they were at the same time last year. And one of the biggest jumps that we've seen in the Austin market is active listings. Active listings were up in the triple digits. So I wanna say it was about up 144% versus where it was last year. So last year this time we had uh, just under 1,800 listings. Uh, at the end of May, we had over 40, uh, over 4,100 listings in Austin. So they are adding more inventory uh, faster than any of the other markets in Texas and um, at a speed, at a rate that uh, I didn't previously uh, project, but they all kind of came on all at the same time. 
That could mean that uh, the uh, June sales will be higher uh, than it looks like it's going to be based on the pending sales, just because there are more active listings uh, than Austin has seen in about the last two uh, in about the last two years. The forecast for Austin for sales flat versus what it was the same time or versus what it was in 2021. Uh, and the average price will be up and it'll be up in around the 20% range. So there's a lot of opportunity for sales price growth. Does this give you some direction in terms of where the market is going and what's happening? Yes, yes. All right, good. Uh, so uh, wanna also make as part of our update tonight a special announcement. And that special announcement is if you've liked what we've uh, shared with you so far, uh, we want to share even more and we want to share it in a and and with maybe a, an air conditioning system that's just a tiny bit less loud uh, but uh, but also uh, all live and together so one of the things that the last two and a half years have taught us is that the traditional what I would call uh, real estate investor association model that my husband and I have been supporting uh, for the last almost two decades is broken Okay. How many of you guys realize in the last two years that something that you were doing is not right? And maybe you need to do a correction, right? So we had that time over the last two years to reflect. And basically what we came up with is historically we would say every month we have a meeting. Come join us every month. We'll share with you a market update. We'll give you tribal knowledge. We'll tell you what we're seeing in the marketplace so that you can use this knowledge. And maybe after about somewhere between one to three years of attending meetings, you'll have enough information to be a successful real estate investor. How does that sound? Terrible, too slow. Like you, sir, you wanna just go home and binge watch YouTube the rest of the night, right? Because now is good when it comes to, becomes to becoming a real estate investor, yes? So is now, right? But doing it over the course of a year to three years, gosh, that's, that's, that's broken. So what we've changed is we've said, we're gonna give you all of that three years worth of Real Estate Investor Association information, but we're gonna boil it down into one weekend and package it really nicely for you guys to be able to uh, you know, binge watch it YouTube style uh, as much as you want to be able to get all the information that you need about investing right here, right now and in Texas. Uh, so what that looks like for the workshop that we've created for the members of the association is we have 12 different strategies. Uh, so many of you guys came here tonight thinking, I'm just gonna do fix and flip, or I'm just gonna do buy and hold, or I'm just gonna do wholesale, right? Well, that's wonderful if you wanna make about 25% of what you could potentially make as a real estate investor. For us, uh, we, invested, we have invested through the best of times, we have invested through the worst of times. I have not updated my resume since, since before 2003, okay? I don't wanna ever have to update my resume. So what does that mean? What's, what's my responsibility now? I need to know how to make money no matter where the market is, right? I need to make, know how to make money every single time the phone rings, no matter what the equity position of the seller is, no matter what the market condition is right now. Especially when there's uncertainty, the more tools that you have in the tool belt, the more likely that you'll be able to win long-term as a real estate investor. So we're gonna go through all the strategies that work in all of the different parts of the market cycle, uh, even in times of uncertainty. We're gonna go through the different marketing strategies that you need to put into place to be able to find these off-market, non-retail, that are actually deals, right? So we're gonna go through what those uh, marketing strategies look like. We'll go through the, what we call it, the exactly what to say for the real estate investor. And what that looks like is the sales scripts. What that looks like is going through with you guys, doing some live role playing, going through the typical objections that we get as real estate investors and teaching you all how to overcome those typical objections. And then you'll also get access to and get to meet some of the people that we personally partner with, some of the people that personally fund our deals or deals that we funded for others or people that we've uh, partnered with as well. And this is really your opportunity to uh, uh, shadow someone, right? To be able to watch, to hear what they did, how they were able to be successful as a real estate investor. And we are doing this both live, for those of you guys who like to come to uh, live meetings, as well as online. And for a very limited time only, we are doing this for free. So we started doing this for free um, in March of 2020, right? The world was punching us in the face. Real estate has given incredible things to us over the years. We wanted to continue to give back. 
And, and, and we basically said, while we're in this quarantine thing, we're just gonna do it for free. We're doing it online, so we'll do it like that. And then I, I said, you know, I kind of said, I want to stretch this out. So I basically said, as long as there is at least one person at our meeting wearing a mask, and as long as the lights are doing poltergeist stuff on us, <laughs> as long as there is at least one person at our meeting wearing a mask, we're going to continue to do this for free. So would everyone think the young lady in the pink, sw pink sweater right now, because this is the only reason why we're still, I, I'm still doing it for free. Yeah, you can give her a round of applause, really. It's, yeah. So she literally saved you guys a couple hundred dollars, which is what we were charging before uh, we decided to do this uh, while the world was a little bit upside down. So if you all would like to join us, we would love to have you all. Uh, we have several different classes coming up in uh, Dallas and Houston and in Austin. Uh, we keep it kind of central Austin so the people in San Antonio can easily uh, get back and forth. So Dallas, July 8th, 9th, and 10th. Houston, July 15, 16, 17. Austin, July 29, 30, and 31. Stay with a friend, stay with a relative, make a, uh, a business vacation out of it, and learn from people who have been successful and able to survive and thrive for the last almost two decades. So if you'd like to get registered for this, uh, some of you guys have already pulled out your phone to do that QR code. Right, so what I'll ask you to do is just uh, snap this QR code. Not, you don't snap a picture, you just pull it up on your phone and then your phone will say, here's a URL, here's a website you can go to. You press on that website. For those of you guys who are a little less uh, savvy or your phones are not working properly, then you can uh, still access this. Uh, just go to Safari or whatever your internet browser is and just type in Texas starterkit.com. We'll ask you a couple of questions to get you registered. And then for those of you guys who are online with us, uh, no worries, we got you covered too. There's gonna be a link right below, so you can click on that so you don't have to click on the, on the QR code that's here. So guys, as we get ready for our keynote presentation tonight, I uh, just want to uh, make sure you uh, know who you're gonna be learning from next. So uh, you're going to be learning from my husband. So he has been uh, investing in real estate for the last uh, two decades right alongside of me. Uh, he is very intelligent. You will uh, love how he teaches. Um, and it's just part of his natural background. So he was uh, computer science and electrical engineering. He was a double major, which, yes, I know it has nothing to do with real estate, but it has everything to do with process is everything to do with systems, is everything to do with presenting in an organized way. So we're not the rah-rah people, uh, but we are the here is a step-by-step-by-step -step -step on how to get things done. Uh, over the course of uh, the last almost two decades, uh, he's amassed, we have amassed a massive real estate investing portfolio and have seen uh, just about everything there is to see in real estate investing, although we learn something new every day. But he's gonna share with you the tips, tricks, and tribal knowledge that have allowed us to not have to update our resume over uh, the last 20 years. Will you all please welcome Mr. Phil Grove. Alrighty, thank you, and welcome everybody. We're gonna get into the top 12 real estate investing strategies for today's Texas market. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. We're trying to get them to turn this very loud air conditioning system off. So I don't know, Shanoa, you can remind them about that if that's possible. Uh, if you are joining us online, uh, well, guess what? Uh, keep watching. If you're on GoToWebinar, if you are on uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, Instagram, or our podcast, uh, some of those broadcasts are limited to 60 minutes, so some of them may not be continuing all the way to the end. Uh, you can, however, register to attend a future live or online meeting by simply going to texasrias.com forward slash live, and you can even join the continued uh, GoToWebinar if you do that as well. Uh, this presentation is sponsored by the Texas RIAs, the largest by far network of real estate investor associations in the great state of Texas, with over 87,000 members, participants, and attendees. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because real estate is local. Laws are local, contracts are local, contractors are local, buyers and sellers are local, neighborhoods are local. Everything about real estate is local. Uh, there's 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there that teach people how to invest in real estate. They all talk about how to do it everywhere 
Well, how to do it everywhere is how to do it at 30,000 feet. But real estate is not bought and sold at 30,000 feet. Real estate is bought and sold at zero feet. So if you want to know what laws apply here and which contracts to use here and which neighbors to invest in here and where to get title companies and contractors here, those are all the details that you learn at your local real estate investor association. And they say if you have even the very slightest interest in real estate, the very first thing to do is to go find and join your local real estate investor association. Again, Texas RIAs is the largest network by far of RIAs in the state of Texas. So why am I here? Well, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak with you guys today. Your time is valuable. I'm going to repay you for your valuable time by sharing some very valuable training and information with you. Tell you a little bit about my own story. In 2003, I went from working in a nine to five job that by then I hated to eventually making over a million dollars a year investing in real estate. I've been doing that for many, 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 many years now. And over the next, oh, maybe up to 90 minutes, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I learned and what I did right. I'm also gonna tell you about what I did wrong because the best way to learn is not from your mistakes. It's from what? Yeah, other people's mistakes. Yeah, experience, they call that the toughest teacher there is. You get the test first and then you get the lesson after. Trust me, that's not how you wanna learn how to invest in real estate. So we're gonna share a little tribal knowledge and encourage you to participate as well. So what are we gonna learn today? How about nine different strategies to make money in big chunks? Sounds good, doesn't it? But I'm not here to sound good, I'm here to teach you. And one of the first lessons I'm gonna teach you is the beauty of real estate is it's a transaction-based business, it scales. What does that mean? Most of you probably make money working in a job. A job does not scale. A job is fundamentally an exchange of time for money. The reason you can't get wealthy in a job is there's only so much time you can exchange. So many hours in your week, month, year, literally only so many hours left of you, of the rest of your life, that you can exchange right, uh, for, for money with a job. But real estate's transaction-based. You do this, 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 you get a check. You do this, 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 you get another check. And you can use other people's money and leverage other people's time and resources. And you can outsource and automate and, and outsource everything. And as you do that, uh, then how many transactions can you do? And the answer is all of them, right? There's, it, there's literally no limit to the number of transactions you can do. In fact, I'm gonna teach you nine different strategies you can even do with no money and no credit. And once you learn how to buy and own real estate with no money and no credit, how many houses can you buy? Now, all of them, right? How many do you want to buy? All of them. Yeah, good, easy, easy answer. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's another lesson. It's like nobody has enough. You all know this. Nobody has enough money. None of you have enough money, not even close, to be real estate investors. I don't have enough money to be a real estate investor. Donald Trump does not have enough money. You know that, right, to be a real estate investor. I don't care what you have, not even close. You got half a million dollars in your checking account. Great, good for you. Go buy a house. Now you're done. Yep. Can't buy another house until you sell that house. That doesn't scale. You need to be prepared to buy any number of properties at any price at any time. You have no idea what that incredible opportunity you're gonna be presented with tomorrow looks like. So you're gonna to have to be comfortable and resourceful in using other people's money. You can't be everywhere at once. You don't know everything. You don't have an unlimited amount of resources. But collectively, you can use other people's money time, resource, and experience. And collectively, you have an unlimited number of time, deals, money, and, and experience, and resource, and that means you can scale it up. When you look across this room, this will tell you what kind of a mindset do you have. You know, what do you see? Do you see your competitors? Or do you see your partners, lenders, borrowers, sellers, buyers? My wife and I figured out something a long time ago. We can make a lot more money. I don't mean a little more money. I mean a lot more money, a lot more money, getting 50% of 1,000 deals than 100% of five deals. The secret to making a lot of money as a real estate investor is to do a lot of deals. Duh, right? I mean, that's pretty obvious. Well, then how do you do a lot of deals? You have to do deals in a scalable way, right? You have to use other people's money, other people's time, other people's resources. And when you start to think that way, we call that the abundance mindset, then there's literally no limit to the number of transactions you can do, which means you're literally no limit to the amount of money you can make. How about how to turn even a small IRA into millions of dollars tax-free? I'm going to demonstrate that in this presentation. I think you'll be impressed. How about how to acquire $10 million in rental properties with little or no money, no credit? 
my wife and I own a portfolio of over $20 million worth of houses here in Central Texas. Uh, now, if I wanted to go buy $20 million worth of houses traditionally, I'd have to put down 20% every time I bought a house. I'd have to be a multimillionaire just to become a millionaire. Well, I was not a multimillionaire when I started investing in real estate 18 years ago. So how in the world I was able to accumulate a portfolio of $20 million worth of houses, I had to learn how to buy and own real estate with little or no money and with no credit. And I'm gonna teach you that as well. And once you learn how to buy and own real estate with little or no money and no credit, then how many properties can you buy? All of them, right? How many do you wanna buy? All of them. So I'm gonna teach you that trick too. I think that's probably my very best trick. So I think you're gonna like that a lot. Great, so then how come everybody doesn't make a million dollars a year investing in real estate? Well, there are some problems and let's talk about the problems. People get stuck. One thing I'm gonna tell you is I don't claim to be the smartest guy in this room. One thing I do claim though is I've been to this room before. You guys are all on a journey to become real estate investors, take your investing to the next level. Whatever that journey is, that, that, that's, that, that journey you're on, that's new to you, but it's not new. Millions of people you know, have traveled on the path that you guys are on right now. I'm going to tell you when everybody gets into this business, they all make all the same mistakes. They all have the same self-limiting beliefs. Uh, they all have the same limited, uh, you know, decisions. Uh, they all fall into the same, the same traps. Uh, and, and they all have the same problems. Like, like, what are some of the common problems people have when they're getting started? Fear. Fear is a big one. A lot of people are just afraid to do this. I was scared to death, honestly. When I did my very first deal, I was scared to death. I'm afraid I'm gonna lose money, I'm gonna to have to fill out a contract, I'm gonna make a mistake. Fear paralyzes a lot of people right at the starting blocks. Next problem, finding deals. I'm here to tell you that good deals are hard to find. Okay, that's the hardest thing about this business is finding deals. Anybody that tells you good deals are easy to find is either a liar or a fool. Okay, the hardest thing about this business is finding deals. But I'm gonna tell you where you look and how you find them, and it's probably not what you're thinking. And then finally, doing deals. So what I love most about being a real estate investor is so many different ways to do it. I'm gonna teach you a whole bunch of different ways to do this, stuff I promise you're not gonna learn watching HGTV. So for most people, these are the problems. Most people never get past these problems. But here's the really good news. This is exactly what real estate investor associations are set up to do. Local, long-standing communities, of real estate investors sharing resources and tribal knowledge and helping people get started, get past these uh, problems. So I'm gonna help you get past this stuff exactly the same way that this network helped me when I was literally sitting in these exact same chairs 18.5 years ago. Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, disclaimer, let me take a deep breath. This subject matters for educational purposes only. We are not lawyers, CPAs, financial planners, et cetera. You should always have your contracts, access, business plans, et cetera, reviewed by an attorney and or financial advisor before completing any real estate transactions. Government regulations also require that I disclose that the results that I discuss are not typical results. I am an action taker and have retrieved remarkable results and the investors I talk about are action takers and not your typical average people. I believe average people don't take uh, any action and therefore get zero results, only you can decide if you're going to be a typical average person or an above average action taker. You know, here in Texas, we have a special saying that pretty much covers all of that. Uh, all hat and no, anybody here from Texas? All hat and no cattle. What does that mean? Everybody says they're gonna roll up their sleeves. Everybody says they're gonna go out and do something. But most people go out and do what? Yeah, nothing. You guys probably heard about the 80-20 rule, right? 20% 20 of the people make all the money in the world. I think real estate investing is kind of like the 95-5 rule. It's 5% of the people that actually go out and do this. But the ones that roll up their sleeves and do this, yeah, they don't just make money, they make gobs of money, incredible amounts of money. Do you guys know that more than 80% of the millionaires in this country got there all or in part through investing in real estate. Do you know it's really, really difficult to become a millionaire not investing in real estate, but you can't be all hat and no cattle. You do have to roll up your sleeves. You do have to go out and do something. All right, <clears throat> fear. If fear is holding you back, I get it. 
I can understand, uh, and I can help. In fact, I'm going to give you more than a million reasons why you don't need to be afraid to get started investing in real estate. Because if you look at the names on the screen, these are just people that sat in the same chairs you're sitting in uh, with a little help from the RIA. They got started, they got past those problems, they got started investing in real estate. I'm not going to go through all these, but I'll tell a few, a few stories because you might relate to a few of these. Uh, Rochelle Swan, pharmacist here in Texas, uh, joined the RIA, uh, sat through the same stuff you're going through, uh, made $35,000 on her very first deal. I helped her on that deal. She is now a real estate investor. Barry Adelman worked for Cisco here in Texas, came to the RIA, uh, learned how to flip houses, flip five houses, made $100,000, quit his job. He is now a real estate investor. Stephanie Grant worked for Motorola here in Texas, came to the RIA, and she partnered on her first deal. So let's talk about that for a minute, partnering on deals. Most people, when they do their first real estate deal, what do they do? They read some book, How to Flip Houses, right? They watch some TV shows, flip that house, right? At home, they go like this, honey, honey, we need to go flip a house, right? They, they, they try to flip a house, they figure it out on their own. They probably make some mistakes. Sometimes they even lose money. Okay, so like, here's like another idea. So here's an alternative idea to all that. How about when you're ready to do your first deal, why not partner with somebody who's maybe done hundreds of deals before, leverage their money, leverage their experience, learn how to do it the right way, and then split the profits. Now, I know what everybody's gonna say. All the new people, they all ask the same question. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would, it, why would an experienced multimillionaire real estate investor wanna partner with a rookie? Why in the world would they do that? Well, I'm gonna teach you guys a fact of life. This is just a fact of life. If you ever want to do business, with somebody that's operating at a higher business stature than you, here's how life works. You're gonna to have to help them before they're gonna help you. I'm sorry, that's life. So what in the world could you do to help a local multimillionaire real estate investor enough to get them to want to help you? Bring them a money-making deal. And that's exactly what Stephanie brought to me. So she brings me this deal and she says, what do you think of this deal? I said, that is a money-making deal. She said, would you partner on the deal with me? And I said, for half the profits, heck yes. I got half the profits. She learned how to do it the right way. That's what we call a win-win, right? How do you think I do so many deals? That's one of the ways I do so many deals. After learning how to do it the right way, she flipped some other houses. She made herself $100,000, and then she quit her full-time job. She is now a real estate investor. And I'll tell you even a little bit more about that story. After she makes this money flipping houses, she goes into work and she puts in her two weeks notice. And her boss stops her. And he's like, whoa, what are you doing, Stephanie? We like you, we like you. We don't want you to quit. Why are you quitting? And she's like, I, I can't afford to work here anymore. I make more money investing in real estate. So the next day, the very next day, her boss calls me, yeah, on the phone to have a little chat. Awkward. I'll never forget what he says to me. He says, I want you to teach me what you taught her because I don't want to work here anymore either. And you guessed it, now her boss, Glenn, is a real estate investor and a member of the RIA. Okay, just one more story, this is cute. One more, just one more, I promise. Jerry and Leslie Gossett, 20-something newlyweds, they were given a plan. All right, kids, here's your plan. Uh, you will go to high school, you will study, you will graduate, you will get a degree. You go to college, you will study, you will graduate, you will get a degree. You will go to get a job, you work your way through that job and career until you retire, that's your plan. I was given a similar plan, probably many of you were given a similar plan. Then they sat in the same presentation you guys are going through. At the end of the presentation, these 20-something-year-old kids, they scratched their heads and they said, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe there's another plan. So what did they do? Well, they learned how to flip houses. They came to the same workshop Shanoa talked to you about. Uh, and then they partnered. Remember partnering? I partnered with them. They partnered on two deals in two months and made $100,000. And after these 20-something-year-old kids made $100,000 partnering on two deals in two months, they scratched their heads again. And they said, ooh, we like that deal. We like that deal a lot. So what do you think they did next? What would you do next? Yeah, 35 more, to be exact. 35 more on average netting. Netting is how much you have left after all expense, after everything, net, net, net. On average, netting 40,000 a house, I'll do the math for you, these 20-something 
workforce dropouts netted a cool 1.2 million bucks getting started on their plan B. Not bad for a couple 20-somethings working on a plan B. They're now real estate investors. So I'm not gonna read through the rest of these. I think you're getting the idea pretty good here though. But look, if you're invited to be part of a large, long-standing, going on decades, you know, local community real estate investor association, if you're, if you're given access to off-market wholesale real estate to buy, if you're given access to the capital uh, to be able to buy those properties and the power teams necessary to fix those properties and flip those properties, uh, if you're given the most advanced training on this planet Earth on exactly how to do all of this right here, right now, using the strategies, techniques, resources, and power teams that have been assembled for a couple decades on how to do this right here, right now, if people within the community, such as myself, even offer to partner on deals with you and then split the profits with you, let me ask you guys a question. Is anybody afraid to do this? Can I cross out the fear? This is the interactive part of the presentation. Can I cross out the fear? Yes. Yeah, okay, so that's my point. This is one of the ways we help people get past the fear, for example, right? If you have the opportunity to learn from local people, work with local people, and partner on deals with local people, it becomes a whole lot less scary, right? And that's just one of the things that we help people get started doing. Uh, and by the way, speaking of getting started, do a quick poll of the audience, try to keep this a little more interactive. How many of you would like a little help getting started? Who would like a little help getting started? Great, okay, I'm in the right place, okay. Awesome, so let's get started. Speaking of getting started, I got started, same room, I was sitting in this RIA, December 15, 2003, that's the day I admitted my very first deal. I uh, flipped my very first house. Uh, it took me six months to do my first deal, it took me five days to do my second deal. Now I've negotiated over 1,200 deals, and I'll show you some of the deals I did that made me some money. I did a renovation on a street called Ten Burnham, I flipped a house on a street called uh, Corsair, I did a renovation I kept as a rental property. I still own that property. Did an equity partnering deal, did an auction option district, so I kept as a homestead. I uh, did another short sale and another short sale. Bought a property subject to, we're gonna talk about that, kept as a rental property. Another short sale that I flipped, an assignment, another assignment. You know what, I'm just gonna have to speed this up because we're gonna be here all night. More assignments and more rental properties and more wholesales and more wraparound mortgages and more flips and subject twos and let me speed this up a lot more more renovations more sh more flips more short sales more assignments let me speed this up even more bum, 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 bum. okay good enough so what's the takeaway here i do approximately a real estate transaction a week in some shape form variety or another i do approximately a real estate transaction a week and you're probably thinking, you know, that's nice. I'd like to learn how to do that. Well, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that if that is your goal. And what that does is it creates money in big chunks. Now, that sounds good, doesn't it? Ooh, money in big chunks sounds good. But I'm not here to sound good. I'm here to teach you. So what does this mean? How does this really work? The way this business fundamentally works is as follows. We find people with problems. Okay, what kind of problems? They have a house they don't want, can't afford, don't need anymore. Uh, they're facing foreclosure, they're moving out of the country, whatever. Problems to entrepreneurs are what? Opportunities, big problems are what? Big opportunities, right, big opportunities. If you're thinking like, I don't want any problem, you're thinking, I don't wanna be an entrepreneur. I don't care what kind of an entrepreneur you are, that's the one thing all entrepreneurs have in common, entrepreneurs add value, help the world by solving the world's problems. So, and we're entrepreneurs, real estate entrepreneurs. We solve problems. So like, what kind of problems? Okay, let's get more specific. Let me give you specific examples. I found somebody facing foreclosure, right? Big problem. And I gave them an out, an alternative, something called a short sale, that allowed them to sell their property without having to bring money to the table, without completely destroying their credit. And I made $16,000 helping somebody solve a problem. Uh, REO stands for real estate owned bank owned property. Banks don't want to own real estate. So I took this off the bank's hands, solving the bank's problem, flipped it, made 36,000. Uh, I got a, I had a, an interesting problem. A guy had a, a house with a legal problem. I had to sell a house by Friday, got it under contract, wholesaled it, made $5,000. Got a property subject to, no money, no credit, fixed it, flipped it, uh, made 68,000. Uh, 5,600 on an assignment. 
uh, $6,000 on a mortgage assignment, $10,000 on a wholesale, $2,800 on a small referral, $12,400 for a large referral. The way this business fundamentally works is as follows. We do things, we do things to find people with problems. And here's the really beautiful part. For every single different type of problem that exists, so let me just repeat that. For every single different type of problem that exists, we have a solution, a strategy. Uh, that helps them, is about helping people, solves the problem, gets us paid. Uh, I can help motivated sellers. I can help non-motivated sellers. I can help people that own their houses free and clear. I can help, help people that are hopelessly underwater where they owe more money and the house is even worth. I can help them. I can solve the problem. I can get paid. Sometimes I get singles. Sometimes I get doubles. Sometimes I get home runs. Sometimes I work on a lead, a deal, an opportunity, a write a problem. Uh, for six months, and after six months, I make $5,000. And I'm like, oh man, six months, $5,000? I could have made more money working on Walmart. But thank goodness I'm not working on just one lead at a time. Sometimes my phone rings, and that phone call makes me $55,000 in 48 hours. And I'm like, oh man, I wish every time my phone rang, I made $55,000 in 48 hours. But that's not how it works either. That's maybe one out of 100 phone calls. So the question you need to ask is simple. How often do you get 100 phone calls? Well, that depends on you and how much marketing that you do. Do you get 100 phone calls every week? Do you get 100 phone calls every month? Do you get 100 phone calls every year? Well, that depends on you and how much marketing that you do. So there's two essential skills that I'm going to teach you that you have to learn to be real estate investors. The first and foremost skill is marketing. Marketing is generating the lead, finding the deal. A lead is nothing more than the name and number of somebody that might want to sell real estate. We need to spend 85% of our time and or money on marketing, right? Generating the lead, finding the deal. The next skill we have to learn is strategy. Strategy is doing the deal, solving the problem. We buy houses, we help people sell houses, get rid of houses and mortgages that people don't want or don't, or don't can't afford or don't want anymore. And, and we do that in a variety of different ways and solves a variety, variety of different problems. So these are the two skills, marketing and strategy finding deals, doing deals, finding problems, solving problems. And by the way, you guys are more than free to take pictures. I see some of you taking pictures. You do know we also post these presentations on our social media. So you can get the whole presentation on social media if you just subscribe to our social media. You can take pictures. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just saying if you, if you want the whole thing, you're, you're more than welcome to that too. So marketing and strategy, finding deals, doing deals, finding problems, solving problems. Uh, we use 65 tested, proven, perfected methods for finding off-market wholesale property. We use a dozen different strategies to actually help people solve the problem and get the deal done. And by the way, over half of the market methods are completely free. And nine of the 12 investing strategies are actually no money, no credit strategies. Uh, so once you buy property with no money, no credit, then how many properties can you buy? All of them, right? Very scalable. So marketing strategy, finding deals, doing deals, finding problems, solving problems. Let's get started by going through all of the different marketing. Actually, first I'm gonna tell you a quick story. This was my very first deal. Uh, let me get a drink here. This was the very first house that I flipped right here in Central Texas on December 15, 2003. And I'll tell you a little story. On December 14, 2003, I was scared to death. I was actually being coached and mentored by the two guys who ran the Real Estate Investor Association back then. And uh, I called them both on the phone on December 14, 2003, I'm scared, are you sure this is gonna work? I don't wanna lose any money, right? It took two seasoned, experienced real estate investors pulling me, kicking and screaming over the starting blocks to get me to do that very first deal. So if you're a little scared, I get it, I can relate and I can help. But I actually had one other thing at that time in my life that was also motivating me to move forward. I was in a job I no longer loved and I was in a career that I no longer loved. And I'm gonna tell you, if you're spending your time doing something you don't love doing, you need a do something different with your life plan. And that's also what I needed. I needed a different life. So, your first deal, my first deal. Your first deal is, in so many different ways, your most important deal. It's kinda of like your first kiss, right? Everybody remembers their first kiss. It's a life-changing experience. Everybody remembers their first deal. It's a life-changing experience. I'll tell you about mine. It took me six months to find my first deal. I was actually an unusually slow starter. I, I'll admit, I was an unusually slow starter. 
Got it under contract using a contract I got right here at the RIA. Bought it using OPM, using other people's money, a private money lender. Do you know we have over a thousand private money lenders within this network? Private money is by far faster, better, and every way cheaper than hard money. Uh, I got a contractor right here at the RIA to fix the property. Uh, I got a realtor right here at the RIA to sell it for me. We always use real realtors to sell them for us. I uh, got a title company, an attorney right here at the RIA to close it for me. And I went to that very first closing and picked up that very first check for $15,384.26. And so you know, when they handed me that check, it was kind of like you unscrewed the cap, popped out the old brain and popped in the new brain. You see, right up until the moment that they handed me that check, I was a real estate investor based on theory. And I wasn't even sure I believed the theory. It's like, I don't know if this is gonna work, and I'm not sure about that, I don't know that. But the second they handed me that check, here's the magic of it, the second they handed me that check, like a switch flipping, I became a real estate investor based on experience. I didn't know anything different except that I knew it actually worked. And what I realized when they handed me that check, if I did this and this and this again, I get another check, right? It worked the first time. And if I did this and this and this again, I get another check. But the really big deal, what I realized, the really life-changing thing, I realized when they handed me that check right at that moment, I realized that I would never, ever, 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 ever for the rest of my life, ever, ever have to work for somebody else. Ever, 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 never, ever again. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't worked anybody else for even one second since they handed me that check. So if you're new and you're just getting started, here's my first piece of advice. You need to focus your energy like a laser beam on that very first deal because that very first deal will change your life, mostly by changing your mindset. Deals two, three, four, five, and six combined, not as hard as deal number one. So I told you I was gonna tell you what I did right. I'm also gonna tell you what I did wrong. I did make one big mistake right out of the chute. I spent all that time finding that deal. I found that deal. Once I found that deal, I kind of put my marketing on hold. I picked up some hammers, started managing contractors, working on that deal, trying to make all the money I could off of that deal. I, I finished the deal, right? I got that check, only to wake up the next day and realize I had pretty much absolutely nothing to do except start the whole business all over again. And this gets me to my very first takeaway, and here it is, and this is the big one. The business of being a real estate investor is the business of finding deals. It's all about finding deals. Why? Because you make the money on the buy. What does that mean? As soon as you find a property and get it under contract, whatever money was gonna be made or not made on that deal, it's done, right there. Yep, you get the money at the end on the sale, but you make the money on the buy. You always have to spend. 85% of your time and or money on marketing looking for the next deal. And you always have to approach this business such that the next deal is always more important than the deal you have now. The rookies all screw this up. The rookies do a deal, right? But then they stop marketing, right? To go work on their deal. And then they finish the deal, right? So they made some money, but they stopped the marketing. So they don't have another deal. So they get the marketing going again. Eventually they find another deal. They do a deal, they make some money, great. But they stop the marketing because they're working on their deal. So eventually they restart the market, eventually get it going again. They find another deal, they do a deal, right? Make some money, great. But they stop the marketing and their income goes up and down and up and down with big, huge gaps in between. Right? You need your income to go up, 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 up. And the only way to do that is you have to keep that pipeline continuously filled with deals. And the only way you can do that is you always have to spend 85% of your time and or money on marketing looking for the next deal. And remember, your next deal is always more important than the deal you have now. And hint, the deals you are looking for are not in the MLS. The MLS is the multiple listing service. It's the retail market for real estate. It's where realtors sell real estate. It's where all the people in the world compete with each other to see who will pay the most. And I hate to say it, but when you're competing against all the people in the world, some of those people are stupid. And you don't wanna ever compete against stupid. Well, at least you don't wanna win competing against stupid. Now, don't get me wrong, folks, I love the MLS. I adore the MLS. Why do I love and adore the MLS? Because after I buy off-market wholesale real estate, where do I then want to go resell it? 
on the MLS because it's been proven that any property put on the MLS will sell for the most that it could possibly be sold for. That's just never where you're going to find heavily discounted real estate. The very best deal on the entire MLS would rarely be a deal that a real estate investor would ever consider taking a second look at. So finding deals. Let's talk about finding deals. Once I realized this whole shooting match is really just about finding deals, then I started to systematize the process of finding deals. <clears throat> and over time, I developed 65 different methods, strategies, campaigns for finding deals. Actually, it's not totally accurate to say I developed 65 methods. What would be more accurate is to say I found 65 things that work and I started to do those things. In fact, I need to teach you all a really important lesson, maybe the most important lesson that I'm gonna teach you today, but for me to teach you this next lesson, first I need to unteach you all something. Okay, so I gotta unteach you all something. When you guys were in elementary school, if you looked over at the paper next to you and you copied down the answers, that was called what? Cheating. cheating. And you were all told that cheating is what? Bad, Bad. wrong. Okay. We're not a bunch of little kids. We're not in elementary school anymore. Going forward, I need y'all to unlearn that. Because going forward, guess what? Yeah, cheating is a shortcut. Are you kidding me? What am I trying to say up here? Uh, what I'm trying to say is simple. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that you are trying to do. There is nothing that you are trying to figure out that I and other people haven't already done and figured out everything, and I mean everything, and I mean every possible detail of everything about this business is completely understood. We know what is in the soil. We know the composition of it. We know the zoning. We know the guys who write the zoning. We know the appreciation rate by street address in all the major metropolitan cities across the state of Texas. We know the exact letters to send to the exact mailing list. We know the exact words to say. We know exactly how to make the offers. We know exactly how to overcome the objections. We even know how many contracts we're going to get signed for every 10,000 offers we send out. Everything, every 10,000 letters we send out, everything, I mean everything, and I mean absolutely everything about this business is completely understood. And once I realized that everything I was trying to do and everything I was trying to figure out, other people had done and figured out, then what did I do? I stopped trying to figure everything out and I just started to, here's that word, copy, okay, copy the 65 tested proven methods for actually doing this business and finding these deals. Now, when it comes to finding deals, these campaigns, some of them take time, some of them take money, right? When you're getting started, you probably have more time and less money. When you get going, you have more money and less time. I will tell you honestly, I don't spend any time at all anymore on marketing. Okay, I outsource 100% of it, but when you get started, you're probably going to insource more. So what are all these different marketing methods? Well, let me teach you a whole bunch. And I got to come up here and grab a battery real quick, so forgive me, folks. I'm getting a little beeping thing up here. It says my microphone is going to go dead any second here, so I better replace the battery before it, uh, before it just stops working. So hold on just a second. All right, can you guys hear me? All right, great, that worked, easy. Okay, so what are all these different marketing methods? Well, let me teach you guys a whole bunch. The first set of strategies has to do with direct mail. This is sending letters and postcards to lists of people uh, that might have property to sell, might be motivated sellers, and some of them will call you back. Those are called leads, and for every different problem or situation that exists, guess what, we have a strategy that helps them solve the problem and gets us paid, and some of them will say yes, right? You can make them an offer. We got an offer for everything. And some of them will say yes, and those are called deals. So you can get mailing lists of people that didn't pay their property taxes, people that are late paying their mortgage, people that have filed for divorce. Two people are combining their income to pay a mortgage. Now one of them's gone. Well, the one that's left is probably trying to pay the mortgage on themselves. They may not be able to do that. You can get a list of people who've inherited a house from somebody that passed away. Uh, people whose credit scores just fell 300 points. People that just got dismissed from bankruptcy. Certainly a lot of financial distress there. You can get a non-owner occupied list. There's a list of people that own a house that they don't live in themselves. Well, technically they're landlords. And a lot of them are what we call accidental landlords. So 
I mean, moved away and, uh, and they rented their house to their ex-spouse or a friend or a family or a neighbor, or they inherited a house with a tenant in it. They didn't really plan on being a landlord. They don't really understand how to be a landlord and eventually they become motivated sellers. You can get a list of people who rent to people on public assistance. You get a code enforcement list. You know, the city is already driving around issuing citations for abandoned houses, hoarder houses, deferred maintenance houses. Do you know you can get that big fat list from the city and you can go look at those properties? You can even get an expired listing list. There's a list of people hired a realtor, tried to sell it, and it didn't sell. So what do we know about these people? We know 100% of these people would like to sell their property, probably now more than ever, but they need solutions that realtors don't offer. Well, hello, that's exactly what investors do offer. So if you send letters and postcards to these lists of people with problems, some of them will call you back. Those are called leads. We have a solution for every problem. Some of them will say yes, and those are called deals. With a website, you can get leads on the internet, bayonet signs, 18 by 24 inch core plastic, plastic signs. You see them along the side of the road. They say things like, we buy houses. Why do you see those signs along the side of the road? They work, yeah, because they actually work, yeah. Newspaper ads still work. Email, autoresponders, magnetic sign. Uh, a little sign on the side of your car. You buy the sign once, you get leads for the rest of your life. Door hangers, okay? You don't want to pay the postage for 10 cents a door. You can have a door flyer put on every door in a neighborhood. Here's one that's pretty much free, driving for dollars. Sometimes I'm driving around and I see a tarp on a roof. You know, they might as well be waving a big red flag. Desperate motivated seller, please buy my house. I mean, think about this. Somebody's most valuable asset, a house, has a serious problem, a leak, and their, their, their solution was to go buy a $5 tarp at Home Depot. How come they didn't fix the roof? No money. Same guy that's not fixing the roof, not paying his insurance, not paying his taxes, probably not paying his mortgage. Sooner or later, an investor is gonna pick up that deal. All right, what are the other marketing strategies? Oh wait, we have a special announcement. <laughs> we interrupt this program for a special announcement. Actually. Chanel already stole my uh, steam, so Chanel already announced it, so I'm not gonna have to go through this a lot. We have a workshop tour coming up, uh, the Texas tour, uh, Central Texas, Dallas, and, and Houston. If you'd like to join us, it is free. I'm teaching this myself. We are 100% Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas. I even have a bunch of other Texans coming. We're gonna do a live property tour, so we're gonna actually have people walking through houses in the middle of this event, showing you how they found their deal, negotiated the deal, financed the deals, decisions they, decisions they made, exit strategies, money they made, questions, answers, very experiential. The best way to learn is experientially. Uh, and that's all gonna happen uh, during the tour. And did I mention that it is free? So pick the date that works best for you. And uh, you can attend live and in person if you would like to come and attend live and in person. I promise we have tables and a lot more room when we do the live event so you're not crammed like we are kind of in this room. Uh, or you can attend online if you'd like to. Uh, we're also simulcasting uh, through Zoom online or any combination of live and online, uh, and that's the Texas tour. Uh, so you can just click the little QR code uh, and uh, go to the link uh, to get the Texas starter kit. Um, there's a whole bunch of goodies in the starter kit. I'll explain that a little bit more later. If you are online, for everybody watching online, uh, in the comments below or somewhere around this video, uh, please click on that link and that'll take you to the place uh, and uh, take you to the same place, but we know that where you came from, uh, from online. So click on the link below if you're listening online. Okay, um, moving right along. Oh, uh, okay, uh, moving right along. The next strategy I wanna to talk to you about is uh, letters of intent. What is a letter of intent? A letter of intent uh, is an offer. So who should you send an offer to? And the answer is everybody, okay? So I'm gonna give you your first homework assignment. This is your first homework assignment. Tomorrow, I want you to send 200 people an offer on their home. Yeah, I'm not kidding, I mean, I'm dead serious. Here's how investors think. Ready, fire, aim. You make the offer and then you negotiate. You make the offer and then you look for the money. You make the offer and then you do your due diligence. You make the offer and then, and only then, do you think about it. You should make everybody an offer. Why not? Do you know that here in Texas, every time you just make somebody an offer, you know you get four different options? You might wanna write them down. 
Option number one, you can buy a house. You now have an opportunity that you didn't have before. It's called taking a shot. If you take enough shots on goal, what do you think is going to happen? Some of them go in, even if you suck. And with practice, more of them go in because you get better. So option number one, you can buy a house. You now have an opportunity you didn't have before. Option number two, you can just terminate the contract, rip it up, throw it away, no harm, no foul. Didn't you know the Texas state promulgated contract gives the buyer the unilateral right to just rip it up, walk away, no harm, no foul? Option number three, you can renegotiate the contract. Do you all know that it's much, 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 much easier to renegotiate than it is to negotiate, right? Especially after somebody calls you back, they're saying they might want to sell, i.e. they want to negotiate. Option number four, you can sell the whole contract itself to somebody else that has money. Notice only one of those four options required you to come up with any money and to buy a house. Just make offers, give yourself options. The sooner the rookie figures that out, the sooner they get there. The left brainers, they overanalyze, they overthink, they plan, study, aim, 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 aim. The right, the right brainers just fire, right? And sometimes they hit one, right? Because if you take enough shots on goal, what happens? Some of them go in. And with practice, more of them go in. So yeah, make offers, give yourself options. Business cards, FISBO, for sale by owner. This is uh, cold calling. People that are trying to sell their own house, why would they sell their own house? Maybe they're lazy, maybe they're crazy. Uh, maybe they need solutions that realtors don't offer. Uh, yeah, hello, that's what investors do offer. Mass media, television, radio, billboards, expensive but effective, especially when you do it with others. Uh, past referrals, other investors. Sometimes the best way to find a deal is to get other investors to find the deal for you. By the way, do you all know what I'm doing up here right now? Anybody want to guess? What do you think I'm doing right now? What am I doing? Yeah, we call it marketing. Yeah, marketing. We're doing marketing. Uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, I will guesstimate, based on the number of people here live and the number of people online, I will guesstimate that sometime uh, over the next uh, 12 months, I will partner with at least one, two, three people that are listening to me right now sometime over the next 12 months uh, on a deal. Uh, average profit, 40 grand, my share, 20 grand uh, net. That means as a result of the presentation I'm giving right now, I should easily be able to put an extra 20 plus 20 plus 20, $60,000 in my pocket sometime over the next 12 months as a result of the presentation I'm giving right now. Not bad, better than a poke in the eye with a stick. Wouldn't you all agree? And by the way, you can all do exactly the same thing because there's people in this room and there's people in this network that have deals that are looking for money. There's people in this network and there's people in this room that have money that are looking for deals. All of the people within this community, by the way, there's tens of thousands of them, are all interconnected through an online network. Do you know multiple times a day and thousands and thousands and thousands of times over the last decade, the members of this community post their deals, questions, offers, loans, resources, back and forth to the other members of this community over that network? I said earlier, guys, you're not gonna find your deal in the MLS, that's ridiculous. That's the retail market. That's the retail pond. That's the pond with the small fish. You need to fish in the wholesale pond. Okay, that's the pond with the big fish. So then where's the wholesale pond? You're sitting in it. Yeah, a large network of real estate investors, wholesaling, horse trading, right? Deals, opportunity, leads, et cetera, back and forth. Welcome to the wholesale marketplace. Oh, by the way, I wanted to introduce somebody to you real quick. So uh, let me, let me pull, pull a little audible here. And um, I wanted to introduce you to people um, Chanel mentioned this briefly. I will mention it in a little bit more detail. Um, we have a little TV show. It's called Houses Flipping People. And um, I have with me the host of the show, uh, Houses Flipping People, uh, Olivia Hathaway. And um, 
We encourage you to watch the show. It's really a show uh, about people that are basically just like you guys, right? Came to the RIA, learned something about how to invest in real estate, their lives were transformed. So we call it houses flipping people, right? The houses flip the people. It's about flipping houses, but it's also how the house flipping has transformed the lives uh, of people that have become real estate investors. So Olivia, thank you for joining us for a minute. Can you explain in a little more detail kind of what the show is all about? Hi everyone, I'm Olivia. Uh, is that on? Is that? It should be, now it's on. Hey everyone, I'm Olivia. Um, I was sitting right on your guys' share not too long ago. When I came to Texas, Re I didn't know anything about the real estate. I was actually a guest uh, that was invited to come over here. And uh, since then, that was my aha moment. That's where I discovered that all the potential, all the possibility. And that day, I feel like my life started being transformed. And I, today, I am a full-time real estate investor. And because of my story, we started with the story of houses flipping people. Because they have all this show showing all about the house. But how much has the real estate has transformed our life as an investor? And why do we even want to become an investor? And having your why, I think, is a huge, in, very important key in your to-do list. Well, well, I mean, just just to kind of like share your story. When you came to this, had you ever done a real estate transaction before? Not at all. Okay. Uh, did you own a home? Like even a home that you lived in home? I live in a home, but I was renting. You were renting a home, so you didn't own a home. Yes. Did you have any money? No, I did not. I had credit cards I, uh, to pay. I had $50,000 on my credit card. Yeah, it is a shame, but that was my reality back so, then. So you showed up minus 50000 net worth. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. If that, you put that's that a way, fair statement. Yeah. So, and you had, a, I remember, a self-limiting belief. You were like, I can't invest in real estate because I don't have any money. A lot of people are like, you don't have any money, you can't invest in real estate, and you believe that, and that's why you didn't come. You were actually a guest. Somebody's like, oh, no, no, you can, you can, you can do this. Uh, and you learn how to do it, right? Um, you actually came to the workshop, and then you uh, did a deal. What was your first deal? Did you, did it was in Houston. It was after, you so know, she, Phil's. She invests all over Texas, like a yes, lot of people and do. Yes, my first deal was actually in Houston. I was door knocking. Yes, I like uh, hills, I like bling bling stuff, but one of my favorite market is actually in door knocking. So. It's, it's, it's one of the free ones. So about half of the marketing is free and half you gotta pay for. So and she was doing the free stuff. Any other right. fancy marketing so, that so all you, works. You, you knocked on the door, you got a guy from a conversation to, to, to sign a contract and, and how much you make on that deal? Uh, 10K. 10K, so not bad, a little better than a poke in the eye with a stick. Yes. So flash forward, um, do you own a home now? I have, I own multiple homes, yes. You own multiple homes. You yes. own rental properties, fix and flips, uh, homestead that yes. you live in. Uh, has real estate transformed your life? A hundred percent. Not just my life, but my kids. I have two boys, 17 and 14. They are getting into real estate as well. So this is why I'm standing here. It is real. It does work. And I don't just show up here. I actually have a fix and flip right here in San Antonio and in other cities as well. But I have right here on your guys' backyard. So I'd love to, do, to work with you guys and future you guys on houses flipping people as well. Yeah, so check out the show if you'd like. Uh, some of the stories, for example, uh, Flavia uh, had a bakery and then a pandemic happened. And in a minute, her business basically stopped existing, right? And so she had to come up with a plan B quickly, came to the RIA, learned how to flip houses. She's flipped 15 houses, so not bad. And this is uh, done a little while ago, so she's done more since then. Yes. Uh, Jeff was going through a difficult uh, divorce. Uh, got laid off in a Fortune 500 company, uh, so he needed a plan B. Real estate ended up becoming a fantastic plan B. Uh, made himself half a million bucks in his first year in that business. Some contractors were working with real estate investors, helping the investors make the big money. So they're like, well, wait a minute, we could be the investors ourselves. So we taught them how to go from contractors to being investors. They did a single fix and flip, a single project, a single flip, made them two million dollars profit two million talk about life changing on one deal that's not normal this was obviously a multi-million dollar house and they made two million profit on a single deal 
uh, Rosie and Roger realtors that decided they decided they don't want to get paid on you know page one of the HUD where the big number is not where realtors get paid on, on page two of the HUD right uh, a therapist becomes a, a, a builder and investor uh, and many many more stories like this yes. so um, Olivia what else would you like to do would you like to tell some of these people's stories guys I can't wait to not just interview you guys over house flip people, but to invest with you guys and i'm glad that you guys are here so thank you all right thank you Olivia. appreciate it all right so yeah i just wanted to kind of tell you guys about that we 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 always uh uh love filming these stories uh it's it's fun uh we feel like we're transforming people's lives and i know probably a bunch of you want your lives transformed so fantastic that's a win 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 okay so let's get back to the marketing what else Realtors, let's have the talk. Um, <clears throat> oops, I'm screwing up my slide here. So uh, I love realtors. My friends are realtors. Realtors are great and realtors are swell. So we good? Now that being said, here's the thing. When realtors go to realtor school and they take all the training that they take to become realtors, they watch all the videos, they attend all the classes, they, they read all the books, they get all the tests, not a single test question they're given, not a single class they attend, not a single book they read, not a single video they watch has anything, anything, in any way, shape or form whatsoever to do with investing in real estate and wholesale real estate, zero. So why does this matter? Well, here's another common rookie mistake. Every day across the fruited plain, People wake up and they watch one of those stupid flip the house shows on TV and the conversation at home goes down something like this. Honey, honey, we need to become real estate investors. Okay, great. What do we need to do? I don't know. I guess we need to go buy a house. Okay, great. How do we do that? I don't know. I guess we should call a realtor. So now you got a brand new real estate investor who has no idea what they're doing. Calling up a realtor who knows absolutely nothing about wholesale real estate. And it's a perfect, if not textbook, example of the blind leading the blind. And they can both waste incredible amounts of each other's time until somebody figures it out. Guys, you're not going to find your deal with the help of a realtor. Realtors sell houses from the MLS. That is the retail market for real estate, right? The best deal in the MLS is not something you'd be even remotely interested in. A realtor will bring you deal after deal after deal. You're going to say, no, no, no. They're going to think you're stupid. You're going to think they're stupid. You're going to annoy each other. And eventually you're going to give up, right? So that's not where we buy our deals. We buy our off market deals, right? We do direct marketing, direct to the problem. We buy in the wholesale marketplace. Now, after we buy off market wholesale properties, where do they, we, we, we then want to resell them? On the MLS. Now call the realtor and have the realtor sell it for you. That's what realtors are great at. Realtors are the world's foremost experts at retail real estate. We buy wholesale, we sell retail. So use realtors to help you do what realtors are great at, which is sell retail. That's what we want to do, right? <clears throat> HUD scenarios, another common rookie mistake. REO stands for real estate owned, bank owned property. And, and when, when rookies hear the word foreclosure, they're like, ooh, foreclosure is the deal, foreclosure is the deal. Yeah, uh, no, it's not. A foreclosure is just a house being sold by a banker. Are bankers desperate, motivated sellers? No. When a bank wants to resell one of their properties, you know what they do? <laughs> they call a realtor. It's pretty smart. It's called an REO realtor. They say, stick it on the MLS, bring me the idiot that pays the most. I don't want that to be any of you. We don't buy those properties. We buy pre-foreclosures before they go back to the bank. Okay, how do you do that? Well, you fish in the wholesale market, you do direct marketing, direct to the problem, or here's another idea. On the first Tuesday of the month here in Texas, rain, shine, holiday or not, everybody that didn't pay their mortgage gets auctioned off at the county courthouse steps, at every county courthouse in the state. And you know that you can get a list of all the houses going to the auction, you go knock on their door, and you could often buy them before the auction for then even less than they will sell at the auction. That's what Olivia was saying. That's what she did for her very first deal. Why can you buy them most likely less than what they will sell at the auction? Because you're not competing against 300 other guys. Okay, wholesalers, let's have the talk. I love wholesalers. There's a lot of horse trading and wholesaling that goes on amongst real estate investors. That's good. That's a good thing. But I always issue a little warning to go along with it. So here's my warning. Nobody will love your money more than who? you 
And that means you have to always do your own due diligence. Always do your own due diligence. Okay, when a wholesaler sends you a deal and they say, this property will be worth $100,000 after it's all fixed up, how much are you gonna be able to resell it for after it's all fixed up? Okay, 80 max. When a wholesaler says this house needs 20,000 repairs, what is it gonna cost you to repair? 40 minimum. When a wholesaler says, oh, it's your lucky day for a $5,000 non-refundable deposit, this lucky deal can be yours, you put down that $5,000 non-refundable deposit, I can guarantee with about a 19 out of 20 chance that I'm right because I've been doing this for a long time, you will be losing a lot of money well beyond the 5,000 you got started with. It is fiction, folks. Please do not believe fiction for a moment. When a wholesaler sends me a deal, I briefly look at all the numbers and I throw the numbers in the trash and then I run my own numbers. And the only reason I even looked at the numbers before I threw them in the trash is I kind of want to know how much they were lying to me when I compare it to the real numbers. So I'm gonna use some strong words because I obviously feel very strongly about this. Look, it would be really, really stupid to ever buy real estate based on the numbers and the information about the real estate provided to you by the person trying to sell the real estate to you. Don't do that. I said earlier, your first deal is your most important deal, and it is. But if you lose money on your very first deal, you know what, at the end of that deal, 100% of your real estate investing experience will have been bad and you'll never come back for more. Okay, if you want to gamble, my advice, put it in the stock market, legalize gambling. There you go. Unfortunately though, in the stock market, insider trading is illegal. In the real estate business, insider trading is advised. Do not invest in real estate unless you know with absolute provable data that the investment is worth much more than you're paying for it even before you buy it. And we can do that with real estate. So you have to run your own numbers. If you don't know how to do that, we will teach you how to do that. Bird dogs, Craigslist, social media, friends, family, etc. Why so many different marketing methods? Well, would you rather fish with a hook or would you rather fish with a net? You need to learn how to fish with a net. And the reason is because this business is a numbers game and now I'm gonna teach you the numbers. I'm gonna teach you something right now that uh, I gotta tell you, um, it took me two years hard work in the trenches to figure out what I'm about to teach you. Two years of hard work in the trenches. So I'm gonna shave two years of your learning curve off right now. By 2005, I had been a real estate investor for two years. And I calculated in my first two years, I generated about 400 leads. A lead is just the name and number of somebody that might want to sell real estate. So I was talking to somebody every couple of days, and then I did the math, and here's what I discovered. As a rookie, on average, for every $100 I spent in paid marketing, uh, I got one qualified motivated seller lead. As a rookie, on average, for every three hours I spent on personal marketing, things like driving around, driving for dollars, I got one qualified motivated seller lead. And then I discovered very conservatively as a rookie, on average for every 20 leads I got, I made at least $20,000 net profit on a deal. So let me do the math for you. That means every time I drove around for 60 hours, I got at least 20 leads, I made at least $20,000. That means every time I sent out $2,000 in direct mail, I got at least 20 leads, and I made at least $20,000. So spend 2,000, make 20. Spend 2,000, make 20. Spend 4,000, make 40. Spend 8,000, make 80. Spend 16,000, make 160. Spend 32,000. You don't have to spend it all at once, right? Right? You got that, right? Uh, make 320,000 net profit. Are you starting to like the numbers? It took me two years to figure that out. And after two years of figuring that out, what I realized is, holy cow, this whole business is just a numbers game and now I know the numbers. I started to see my business in a very different way after I realized this. I now see my business like it's a little black box and we're gonna call that little black box a marketing machine. And the way that little black box works is every time I stick $100 worth of marketing in one end, eventually $1,000 worth of net profit pops out the other end. Now if you had a little black box and every time you shoved a $100 bill in one end, a $1,000 bill popped out the other end, how many dollars would you stick in the box? I, all of them, yeah, exactly, all of them. And I started spending 
hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands. And today, on some months, I spend up to $100,000 in marketing in one month, up to $100,000 in marketing in one month. Because once you know it's just a numbers game, it's on, it's on. I have one guy that works for me and all he does all day long is marketing. I have another guy that all he does is analytics. All he does is measure the results. That's all they do, their whole time, full-time job, up to $100,000 a month. Once you know it's on, it's on. It's a numbers game, right? And the numbers start with marketing. Sometime later, I actually wrote a book on uh, Texas Real Estate Investor. We're not selling any books tonight, but I will repeat something I said earlier. There's nothing that you are trying to do. I guarantee there's nothing that you are trying to figure out that I and other people haven't done and figured out. What is the shortcut? Copy stuff that's been figured out. Real estate's not that complicated, okay? But there's a lot of details. That's the thing about real estate. Uh, you know, I went to engineering school. That was complicated. That was really complicated. I had to take calculus, calculus two, calculus three. By the time I took calculus three, I had to remember calculus one and two. It was really complicated. I've never had to solve a differential equation to flip a house. It's not that complicated. But unlike engineering and calculus, it's a mile deep. The thing about real estate, it's a mile wide. Learning real estate is more like learning a language than learning a skill but you can't learn a language from reading a book. Go buy a hundred books on how to speak Spanish. Read them all, you're not gonna know how to speak Spanish. You'll know how to count to 10. That's about how far I got, right? All right there's only one way to learn how to speak a, a, a language. What is that? Yeah, immersion. If you wanna learn how to speak Spanish, get somebody to tie a parachute on your butt, toss you out of an airplane in the middle of Spain, right? You wanna eat or go to the bathroom, you're gonna learn some Spanish. You have to hear things two, three, five, 10, 20 times. It's not complicated, but that's the only way to do it. Real estate is exactly the same way. When I wanted to learn how to invest in real estate, I read books, I listened to podcasts, I watched YouTube videos, and I got absolutely nowhere. It was not until I joined the local real estate investor association, started surrounding myself with real estate investors, right, hearing things two, three, five, 10, 20 times, that actually got immersed, right? You heard things enough to actually pick it up and do it, uh, do it myself. Okay, um, and, and it, even though I even have a book, I don't actually encourage people uh, to read books. I think it's kind of a waste of time um, for all the reasons I talked about, it, right? If reading books turn people into millionaires, the library should be filled with millionaires, right? I mean, but they're not, uh, and I just told you why. So we're right at the halfway point in my presentation. I'm about to get into the strategies, which is arguably the most interesting part of the, the presentation. We're gonna talk about the mechanics of how these deals actually work. Uh, but remember at the very beginning of this, I said, you know, my job and, and, and what I'm up here to do is to make you educated contributing members of this community. And, we, and we, we do want you to be contributing and participatory. You know, we do these meetings all over Texas and we always have new people that come to the meetings and we call the new people tourists, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Like, honey, let's go check out the, the, the real estate meeting, right? And nothing wrong with being a tourist, right? But, but we figured out something a long time ago. We don't want it, people to just be tourists. We want people to be active, partnering, buying, selling, lending, borrowing, you know, that, that's how we all make money, right? Transactions, doing deals. But I also figured out something a long time ago. I can't turn somebody into a real estate investor in just 45 minutes. If I could sprinkle pixie dust around the room and turn everybody a real estate investor in 45 minutes, yeah, that would be awesome. I don't know how to do that. I can, however, and I have, on numerous occasions, turn people into real estate investors over a period of 24 hours. Or actually, it would be more accurate to say 24 hours spread out over three days, giving us enough time to get through all the nitty gritty details of how this business works. So something we do here at the RIA is exactly that. The RIA sponsors the Texas Real Estate Investing Workshop. I teach this myself. This is not some traveling circus roadshow. These are 100% Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas using strategies that work here. There's things you do in Texas you would never do in any other state. There's things that are legal in 49 states 
that are not legal in Texas. And people are doing it because they don't know any better. Lease options, rent to own, not legal in Texas, legal in 49 other states. People still teach you because they don't know any better. Don't do it. The, 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 the penalties uh, are so severe, it's gonna cost you basically your entire retirement if you actually do that. And there's things you need to know, and you need to know how to invest from local investors. So I'm gonna teach you how to invest over a period of 24 hours spread out of three days. I'm gonna teach you all 12 strategies. You can't be a one-trick pony, you need to know all the tricks. I'm gonna teach you all 65 methods for finding off-market wholesale deals. I'm gonna even teach you 10 different closes. Closes are literally the words you say to get somebody to sign a contract. I'm gonna demonstrate one in a moment. I'm gonna show you how I got a woman to give me her house for free. Now you're all thinking that's ridiculous. I can't believe it. a valuable house just gave it to me for free because of the words I said to her. You're all thinking, I don't even believe you. I don't want you to believe me. I'm saying something purposely outrageous so that when I demonstrate how I actually did it, you're gonna be going, aha. So I got your attention now. So there you go, right? That's called a close. We have closes for different people and strategies and situations. You're gonna learn how to, you can partner with me, okay? You don't have to partner with me but a lot of people love partnering when they get started. It's safer, you're leveraging other people's money and experience. I make money, you make money. We have lots of people within this community that will partner. You're gonna have to do something for me or somebody else to get them to partner with you. What are you gonna have to do? You're gonna have to learn how to go find a money-making deal, right? And be willing to split the profits. Uh, learn how to access our funding. We have over a thousand private money lenders within this community. Thousands, and I mean thousands. I mean, we even have a whole show about thousands of Texas real estate investors, successful ones have launched their investing careers at this workshop, The Real Deal, Texans teaching Texans how to invest in Texas. Uh, so we're doing a Texas tour and uh, the dates are up here. Uh, pick the date that works, decide if you wanna come in person uh, or if you want to attend online or some combination of the two, uh, that's all fine. Uh, with me, uh, and uh, it's a life-changing thing. Now, if none of these dates work out for you, for example, like if your daughter is getting married on one of these dates, here's my advice. Reschedule the wedding, okay? Because the most important thing that'll change your life in a good way is gonna be attending a workshop that'll change the trajectory, literally change the trajectory. And, and it, it is a life-changing experience, I'm gonna tell you that. Um, during this event, I am gonna invite people that have come to this event in the past to actually come in the middle of the event, right? Online, walking through houses, holding up phones, showing you deals, right? And they're gonna show you how they found their house, how they financed it, uh, how much money they paid, how much money they made, uh, the decisions they made, exit strategies, uh, and then we'll do Q&A where you can ask them questions. And I'm only gonna tell you right now, some of these people, some of these people are now multi-millionaires, having known nothing at all before they actually came to this same workshop. So life-changing experience. Um, okay, so pick the date you want and uh, get, the, get the starter kit. Um, oh, one other quick uh, announcement. This is a, a little tangent, but probably a good one. Um, how many of you just out of curiosity to a poll how many of you are interested in commercial real estate investing? Commercial real estate investing? Okay, well, I'm good half of you. Okay, commercial is different than residential. Obviously, we're talking bigger numbers, right? Flip a house, half a million, 300,000, whatever. Flip a, uh, an apartment building, is 10 million. So we're talking $10 million deals, sometimes 50 million. Sometimes we do maybe even up to $80 million deals. So these are multi-million dollar deals. Um, now, the, the trick about like, how do, you, how do you buy a $10 million apartment building? How do you actually do that, right? We've solved the problems for doing this. Uh, to buy a $10 million apartment building, um, first you have to find it, but to buy a $10 million property, uh, first you get a $7 million loan. Now here's the good news. These are called agency loans. They're not based on you, your job, your income, your credit, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's based on the property itself, right? So anybody that finds the right deal can get the $7 million loan. What's the catch? Here's the catch. To get the $7 million loan, you have to put $3 million of cash down. So where do you get $3 million cash down fast? Well, you have to raise it. For example, you get 60 investors, so each invest $50,000, there's $3 million down, right? With the $7 million loan, you buy the $10 million apartment building. 
But when you pool millions of dollars together from multiple investors, you're creating what the government calls a security. And how that money is raised is regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And if you break the rules, you can literally go to jail. Like Martha Stewart, you can go to jail. Okay, so you got to do this legally. So we have an SEC compliant attorney that's part of this network. We have a whole different group within this network called the Canish Major Incubator. We have over a thousand investors within the incubator. We can fund multi-million dollar, right, commercial projects all across the state of Texas. We can do it typically in under 14 days. So we provide training for people who want to do commercial. We provide the money to fund the deals. We provide investment opportunities for people to invest in deals. If you invest $50,000 into a commercial project, for example, and you can use your IRA to do this, it's not unusual that you put $50,000 in a project that you get $100,000 back at the end of that project. So if you think about it, you get paid $50,000 to learn how to be a commercial investor. And then after you learn how to do it by making money doing it and as a passive investor, then you go find a deal and then where do you get the $3 million down payment for your deal? You bring that deal back to the Candace May Drink Bear as an investment opportunity. So that's basically how commercial works for those of you that are interested in commercial. So we're doing something very unique and very special. We have a whole bunch of multi-millionaire commercial real estate sponsors across the state of Texas that focus in different asset classes. Things like apartment buildings, RV parks, mobile home parks, strip malls, medical office buildings, assisted living facilities, raw land development, right? All these different multimillionaire Texas commercial investors as a personal favor to me are coming together at something we call the Commercial Expo that is taking place on September 9th, 10th, and 11th. It is extraordinarily rare to get a bunch of multimillionaire Texas investors in the commercial space to bring people behind the curtains to teach how this business actually works. It is a very rare, very unusual opportunity to go behind the curtains, meet multimillionaire commercial investors across all the different asset classes, right? There's some groups that do apartment buildings. There's no group that does all asset classes all across the state of Texas, has the money, training, and resources all in one place. That is the expo that is taking place on September 9th, 10th and 11th. If you register for the uh, starter kit, we will also give you tickets to the expo. So it's a pretty unique opportunity uh, that we provide to this community. Now I'm going to tell you, for those of you interested in commercial, I want you to treat this as the part two workshop. Okay, if you're just getting started, you need to attend one of the residential workshops first and then att attend the commercial workshop second. I'm, I, I, if you're coming to the residential workshop, 75% of the people that come to the residential workshop are just getting started. So I'm assuming they're just getting started. If you're coming to the commercial workshop, I'm not reviewing the basics, right? I'm assuming you've already been to this level of training and then we're gonna take it to the next level above that. So do not come to the commercial workshop unless you're already an experienced residential investor ready to go into commercial or you've come to one of the commercial workshops first. But that's my, uh, my advice. Uh, the commercial workshop is only online. Statewide, it's going to be a Zoom meeting. The way we're able to do this across the state uh, with all these uh, multimillionaire uh, sponsors is, is to do it all through Zoom. So we're going to, we're, <laughs> where is it going to be? In Austin, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio simultaneously. So uh, through, through Zoom. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the commercial expo. Okay, so uh, we talked about fear, right? Cross, cross that one out. Talk about marketing, finding deals, right? Cross that one out. Now let's talk about how to actually do the deals, doing deals. So marketing check, let's get into the strategies. Okay, strategy. Um, there's a lot of different ways to invest in real estate. Uh, and you can watch YouTube videos or read books or attend seminars on how to do short sales and buy and hold, how to do mortgage assignments, auction options, how to do referrals, how to do wholesaling, contracts for deeds, how to do lease options, house swapping, how to do wraparound mortgage equity partnering, and of course even how to do fix and flip. And you can even spend a lot of time and money and all that training and education. In fact, my wife and I have actually spent over $100,000 on training, coaching, seminars, books, tapes, et cetera. Most of it was great, 
Some of it was not great, it all sounded great. But I don't feel bad spending over $100,000 on my education because we've actually made many millions of dollars from our education. But I do have a little pet peeve at how most people learn this and how most people get taught this. Because when you look at all of these different investing strategies, here's the good news. They all work. All of these strategies can make you invest, uh, money investing in real estate. The bad news is that they each only work in unique situations. You see, each of these strategies is the solution to a specific situation, problem, opportunity. But remember what I said earlier, your job one is what? Finding the deal. So here's another common rookie mistake, right? <clears throat> Most rookies, they go out, they do some marketing, they generate a lead, right? Uh, lead is the name and number, somebody has a problem, somebody wants to sell real estate. Well, if this guy had gotten the right training, he would have learned how to help the seller solve their problem using a strategy called a wraparound mortgage. That's the correct solution to that lead's problem, but that's not the training he got. This guy just went to one of those silly wholesale seminars, all he learned how to do is wholesaling. So he doesn't know how to do a wrap, he just knows how to do a wholesale, so he's looking for a wholesale deal, but he didn't find a wholesale deal, he found a wrap deal, he doesn't know how to do a wrap, so he can't make money on that lead, and he can't help that seller. So what does he do? He does some more marketing. Go. Yeah, do you do some more marketing? Now we generate another lead. Now if we only knew how to do a mortgage assignment, right, we could help somebody solve a problem, get a, get a check, but he doesn't know how to do a mortgage assignment. Remember, all he learned how to do was wholesaling, so he's still looking for a wholesale deal, didn't find a wholesale deal, found a mortgage assignment deal, doesn't know how to do that, so what does he do now? He does, does, does some more marketing generates another lead. Now, if he only knew how to do an auction option, he could solve a big problem and get a big check. But again, he doesn't know how to do an auction option because all he knows how to do is wholesaling and he's still looking for his wholesale deal. Are you starting to see the problem? This is the problem. There's 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there that teach people how to get started investing in real estate. But what they pretty much all teach you is this. You need to get started by learning one strategy and this is the best strategy. No, this is the best strategy. No, this is the best strategy. Well, whatever. You need to learn a strategy uh, learn how to make money on that strategy, and then after you learn how to make money on that strategy, then you can learn some other strategies. And it sounds pretty good, it feels pretty good, but forgive my language when I say this, that is a completely ass-backwards way to go about this. Saying that you need to get started by learning one strategy, and you need to make money on one strategy before you learn the other strategy, that's kind of like saying you need to go to Las Vegas and learn how to bet on one number on the roulette wheel. And after you make enough money betting over and over and over again on that one number in the roulette wheel, well, then later on you can learn how all the no other numbers work. Well, that's ridiculous. And yet that's how 95% of real estate investors get started investing in real estate. And is it no surprise that 95% of real estate investors give up before they ever get going when they invest, get started investing in real estate? And probably about 99% of wholesalers. So let's talk about wholesaling. There's nothing wrong with wholesaling. Wholesaling is one of the 12 strategies that I use and that I teach. In fact, it's by far the easiest strategy to teach. The problem with wholesaling is it's the hardest one to do that makes the least amount of money. So when I hear somebody say, I'm going to get started by wholesaling, here's how my brain translates that. I'm gonna do the hardest thing there is to do that makes the least amount of money. And I know from my experience that about 99% of people that get started with wholesaling give up before they ever get going. How many of you, for example, have read the book, The Millionaire Wholesaler? Yeah, it's never been written, okay? <laughs> and it never will be, because there's no such thing, right? And I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's just one of many strategies that you can use. So I'm gonna teach you how the top 5% of investors do this. And my advice, play to be in the top 5% or don't bother because they make all the money. So here's how I do it and here's how I'm gonna teach you how to do it as well. I bet on all of the numbers on the wheel and then I spin the wheel a lot. What do I mean by I bet on all the numbers on the wheel? I use all 12 strategies. Why not learn all 12 ways to fill out a contract? Why not learn all 12 ways to solve a problem? You spend time and money, it's called marketing, to get somebody with a problem to call you. There's a way to help them and solve the problem and get paid. You need to help them and solve the problem and get paid. And once you know all 12 of these strategies, collectively these 12 strategies provide a solution to every single problem that exists. There is no exception. 
motivated sellers, non-motivated sellers, free and clear, hopelessly underwater, we can make money on every single opportunity that exists. And then once you learn how to do that, then what do you want to do? You want to just spin the wheel a lot. What does that mean? Do a lot of marketing, take a lot of shots on goal. Look at a lot of deals. If you take a lot of shots on goal, some of them will go in, right? Even if you suck and with practice, you get better. So how do you do that? First you do the marketing, then you got to know all the strategies. So let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the strategies. Uh, it's really my favorite thing about real estate. There's so many ways to do it. So let's talk about all the ways to do it. Actually, first let me tell you another story. This was my first big deal. After I was a real estate investor, for just over two years, I flipped this house. And I actually made 291,000 net profit, pretty good profit, flipping this house. But the more interesting part of the story is, <clears throat> I was actually the eighth investor at bat. What does that mean? Seven other real estate investors looked at this deal before me and passed on the deal. How's that possible? How's that even conceivable? How could seven different real estate investors pass on a deal, an opportunity to make almost $300,000 net profit on a deal? How's that even possible? I'm gonna tell you it's not just possible, it's typical. Let me tell you the rest of the story. First investor walks into this house and says, I'd love to buy your house. But your house is underwater. You owe more money than the house is worth. You can't even afford to sell me your house. Second investor walks into this house and said, I'd love to buy your house, but you're in bankruptcy. I can't buy a house from somebody in bankruptcy. Third investor walks into this house and says, well, I can help you avoid a foreclosure by doing something called a short sale. But I can't do that while you're in bankruptcy. Plus, you have a mid-construction project here, and I just don't do mid-construction projects. I walked into this house and I said, my, oh my, oh my, you have a lot of big problems here. Big problem means what? Big opportunity. You know, it took one, two, three different strategies to solve this guy's problem. I solved the problem, I got the check. My competition was a bunch of one-trick ponies. Most of my competitors are a bunch of one-trick ponies. 30,000 books and tapes and seminars out there teach people how to be one-trick ponies. One-trick ponies are annoying. They get in the way at times, but they don't last long. Guys, if you think you're gonna find pretty properties at big discounts, just hanging off the trees, waiting for you out there. Yeah, you're smoking crack. Okay, this is what opportunity looks like. I want a house where half the house burned down. I want a house where a meth lab exploded in the garage. I want a house that was flooded. I want a house that had mold. I want a house where someone was murdered in the living room. Dead serious, a murder house. You can make a fortune on a murder house. Oh man, I'm looking for murder. Anybody know about a murder house? Let me tell you about a murder house. I have one in South Austin. When you buy a murder house, how much does it cost to buy a murder house? 20 cents on the dollar. And you know what everybody says when they walk by that house? That's a murder house. And a year later, you know what everybody says when they look at that house? Man, something bad happened in that house. And two years later, everybody walking by the house, somewhere around here, something bad happened. And three or four years later, you know what everybody says? How much is that house? Bought a house for 80 grand. I'm ready to sell it for 380, right? I mean, it's just, pain, you know, good market, all the stars align, but that's, that's, that's any kind of a stigma. Stigma goes away, right? You got a hotel where somebody got shot 100 years ago. Now it's a, it's a tourist attraction, right? I mean, it's like, yeah. Stigmas go away, flood houses, all of these things, right? But that's just one example. Problems are opportunities, big problems, big, big opportunities. I'll tell you another story. Uh, one of my students just recently bought <clears throat> one of those uh, $150,000 Teslas, uh, paid cash for it, and he calls it his air car. Air car, H-E-I-R, air car. Yeah, somebody died without a will. Do you know that most people don't have a will? But they did have 42 heirs. And everybody said, no way, man, there's no way, no way you're gonna get 42 people to agree on something, big problem. Well, it took a little effort, but eventually he got 42 people to agree that a little bit of something is a whole lot better than a whole lot of nothing. Right now he's driving around a $150,000 air car. Problems are opportunities. Big problems are what? Big opportunities. That's what we do, we solve problems. So we use marketing to find the problems, and then we use strategy to solve the problems. So let's get into some strategy. 
First strategy I'm going to teach you today is wholesaling. It's the easiest one to teach. Might as well teach you right now. How does this work? It's actually pretty simple. You simply find a property and get it under contract. How much money does it cost to get something under contract? Nothing. Can you all afford that? Yes, I think you can. Now, after we get the property under contract, instead of buying the property, we're simply going to sell the contract. When you have a property under contract, you have what's called an equitable interest in the property. You can actually sell the contract itself, your interest in the property, to another investor for a fee. How much is the fee? 500 to 5,000 on a small deal, 10 to 25,000 on an average deal, 25,000 dollars or more on a big deal. And this is a strategy that is a no money, no risk strategy. I've discovered it's really hard to lose money when you're not spending or investing any money. Nine of the strategies by, that we use, by the way, are no money strategies. Nine of them, not nine of them, right? This is the simplest one to understand. A lot of the other ones are more profitable, but they're a little more complicated. So I like to teach experientially. Let me, let me show you an actual experience. This is Kimberly. She sat in the same chair as you guys are sitting in, went through the same training, came to the workshop. We were charging for it, but she came to the workshop and learned how to do this. And then she rolled up her sleeves and she got to work. And she told me about this deal. I'll share the story with you. Her mom was visiting her from out of town. So Kim's in the car with her mom. And her mom's like, Kim, where are we going? Oh, well, mom, we're going to get a house under contract. What? Kim, are you crazy? What do you mean you're getting a house under contract? You just graduated from college. You don't have any money. You don't have any credit. You don't even have a job. What do you mean you're getting a house under contract? Don't worry, mom. I know what I'm doing. So Kim's mom watched Kim walk into this house and offer the seller $265,000 cash for the house. And he signed the contract. Obviously, they talked on the phone ahead of time. Obviously, it was a motivated seller. Kim then took that signed contract and she posted it out to the network. I told you that before, multiple times a day, thousands and thousands and thousands of times over the last decade, the members of this community post their deals, contracts, offers, questions, resources, whatever, back and forth, right over that network. So Kim posted this deal out to the network and guess what? Several other investors, members of this network wanted to buy that contract, that deal from Kim. And one of the other members of the RIA paid Kim, negotiated and paid Kim $17,000 for the contract. So Kim just sold her contract to another member of the network for $17,000. So Kim is now a believer. Actually, Kim was a believer. Now Kim's mom is a believer. Now, what would Kim have done with the contract had nobody been interested in buying her contract? Then what would she have done with the contract? Ripped it up. No harm, no foul. Thrown away. No harm, no foul. Uh, but she didn't need to, did she? Now, who bought the contract? Another member of the RIA by the name of Tatiana. Let me tell you about Tatiana. I know Tatiana very well. Tatiana paid Kim $17,000 for the contract. So the way you do that is you literally cross Kim's name or Kim's company's name out as a buyer, write Tatiana's company's name in as a seller, right? In exchange for, as, as the new buyer, in exchange for $17,000. So Kim sold the contract to Tatiana for $17,000. Tatiana then bought the property for 265,000 cash. She had the cash. She kept it for six months as a month to month rental. And then after the tenants moved out, she did a renovation, small addition, and then she sold it after owning it for 12 months. And when she sold it, she made almost $100,000 of net profit that she only had to pay long term capital gains taxes on no income tax. Do you think Tatiana was pretty happy that Kim found that deal for her? You bet. So let me ask you guys a question by a quick show of hands. How many of you by a show of hands are cash buyers? Wave your hand around if you're a cash buyer. Ooh. All right. Let me ask a different question. Um, how much cash do you have to have to make a cash offer? Zero. Zero. How much cash do you have to have, therefore, to be a cash buyer? Zero. You don't have to have any cash to make a cash offer. You don't have to have any cash to be a cash buyer. You just need to know people with cash. So let me ask you another question. Does anybody here know somebody that you could call if you get a smoking hot deal to buy a property for a big discount for cash? Does any of you know any such person, for example, who? Who? Yeah, me. What do you think I'm doing up here? Over here, guys. Over here. Right. That's why I'm here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
And in fairness, and in fairness, there's hundreds of guys just like me out on that network that would be pleased as punch, right? If you guys rolled up your sleeves, got out there, got some properties under contract, and pitched them back to the group. That's why we need you. That's why we want you. That's why we'll even train you, right, on how to be educated and contributing members of this community. But I can see I'm struggling with some self-limiting beliefs. So I'm going to try this again. By a show of hands, how many of you are cash buyers? Let me see how many cash buyers. Oh, fantastic. Love talking to room for a cash. Are you a cash buyer? Are you two cash? Oh, there we go. Thank you, cash buyer. I love talking to room for a cash buyers. And by the way, the RIA instantly puts people with cash in connection with people with deals. Instantly puts people with deals, contracts, in connection with people with cash. People, you read these books, it says you need to go build a buyer's list. Uh, check, I already got it. Just post your deal. I, I've got thousands of buyers ready, able-minded. I'm on the list. There's thousands and thousands. We did that for you. Just post it. It's done. Buyer's list, you don't need to waste a penny of time, money, or effort on that. That's done for you right now. I already handed it for you. You need to go now find deals. That's your job is to go out and find deals, right? And that's the most important job for all of us real estate investors. Okay, our next strategy is a bit more complicated and frankly, a little more interesting. It is called buying a property subject to the mortgage. This is buying houses with no money and no credit. I am a national expert on this topic. I might possibly be the national expert on this topic, but I am certainly a widely recognized national expert on this topic. If you've ever heard of this, there's a pretty good probability that whoever told you about it either learned it from me or learned it from somebody or learned it from me. How does this work? What does this mean? When somebody buys real estate, how does that work? They go to a title company, they sign a big stack of documents. Most of the documents that are closing are disclaimers and disclosures, right? But there's two documents that get signed that actually make the transaction happen. The two documents that make the transaction happen are the deed and the note. The deed and the note, okay? Notice these are two separate instruments. Now, whose ever name goes on the deed, that's who owns the property. Whose ever name goes on the note, that's who's responsible for the mortgage, a deed and a note. Normally, it's the same guy on both. A guy buys a house, his name is on the deed, his name is on the note, he owns the house, he's responsible for the mortgage. That's normal. He moves into the house, it's his house. All the rights, privileges, responsibilities, and benefits of home ownership, they're all his, it's his house. At the end of the month, he gets a statement from Bank of America, that says you owe us $1,000 for your mortgage, he writes him a check for $1,000. Bank gets the check, bank's happy, he's happy, everybody's happy, that's how it works. And then the guy goes on to get married. And well, you know, Texas is a community property state, so after the guy gets married, the wife is added to the deed. Look on the tax records, now there's two names on the deed, his name and her name. But his name is still the only name on the note. Just because somebody's taken on or off the deed, that does not in any way, shape, or form affect the note. And then time goes on and things don't work out and they get a divorce. And in their situation, the wife gets the house in the divorce. So now something kind of interesting has happened. Now her name is the only name left on the deed, but his name is still the only name on the note. So the question is this, as long as he keeps sending a check every month to Bank of America or she starts sending a check every month to Bank of America, or a tenant or a property manager, a neighbor, investor, friend, or family member, or somebody sends Bank of America a check every month, the question is, does Bank of America care who wrote the check? No. There's some guy, Bank of America, opening up envelopes, oh, we got a check, came on time for the right amount, it cleared, we're good. So if you're all listening to my story so far, I just told you all a story about a woman, about a spouse, about a person that was able to acquire real estate with no money and with no credit. There it is. I told you I was going to teach you how to acquire real estate with no money and no credit. There's an example, right? Yeah, pretty good, huh? Okay, so here's the really, really good part. You can all do exactly the same thing 
and you don't have to get married to do it. Because here in Texas, here's the deal. Anybody, any of you, anybody, anybody can go up to any homeowner, has any loan, any mortgage, from any lender at any house at any time, and you can make them a deal. You can make them an offer. The offer any of you can make with any homeowner that has any loan, any mortgage, from any lender at any house at any time is this. I will make the payment on your mortgage for you going forward. Or I will find somebody to make the payment on your mortgage for you going forward. What's the catch? The catch is you simply have to hand the deed, which is ownership of the property to me. It's called buying a property subject to the existing mortgage. You do this with any homeowner that has any loan from any lender on any house at any time. And the only person on this planet that has to agree to this transaction is the person whose name is on the deed, not the bank. The bank has absolutely no say in this transaction. It's federally regulated. 1982 Garden St. Germain Act. Anybody can deed their house to anybody they want at any time. Anybody can pay somebody else's mortgage if they want to. So if you're listening to me closely, here's what you just heard me say. You can buy any house in Texas from any homeowner in Texas that has any loan from any lender. You can buy that person's house at any time. And you can buy that person's house even with no money and even with no credit by simply offering to take over the payment on their mortgage or even offering to find somebody to take over the payment in the mortgage in exchange for them simply handing the deed, which is ownership of the property to you. It's called buying a property subject to the existing mortgage. And once you learn how to buy real estate with no money, with no credit, then how many houses can you buy? All of them, okay? When somebody's in financial distress, this is what you need to understand. When somebody's in financial distress, they have a house and they have a mortgage. Is the house the problem or is the mortgage the problem? The yeah, owning a house is never a problem. Being responsible for a mortgage when you're in financial distress, that can be a big problem. If you solve the problem by taking over the payment or finding somebody to take over the payments, in exchange for solving the problem, you ask them to transfer the deed, hand the deed over to you. It's called buying a property subject to the existing mortgage, simply agreeing to pay somebody else's mortgage going forward in exchange for the deed. Now, when somebody hands you their deed, you now own it. You can do whatever you want with it. You can renovate it, retail sell it to somebody else. You can wrap it. You can assign it, you can keep it as a rental, you can keep it as your homestead if you want. I've helped many of my friends here in Texas buy their very own homestead with this little, and we're gonna hold the questions for the end if you don't mind. With, I've helped many of my friends here in Texas buy their very own homestead with this little or no money, no credit needed strategy. Okay, how much money can you make? Well, there's a lot of ways to make a lot of money when you're buying houses with no money and no credit. Small flip, at least $10,000, that's pretty much at the very low end of the scale, typically a lot more, and this is another little or no money, little or no risk strategy. Let me show you an example of a deal. This is one of the $20 million worth of houses that I own here in Texas. Like I said before, if I wanted to go buy $20 million worth of houses traditionally, I'd have to put 20% down every time I bought a house. I'd have to be a multi, multi-millionaire just to become a millionaire. Well, I was not a multi, multi-millionaire, right, when I started investing in real estate. So how was I able to acquire millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of real estate? Well, most of my portfolio was acquired using exactly this strategy, purchase subject to. So let me give you an example. The woman that owned this house had a house worth 150000 She only owed $110,000 on the mortgage. So the house has $40,000 of equity. She had this house rented out for $1,600 a month rent. The mortgage payment, including tax and insurance, is $1,100 a month. So this house is generating $500 a month of gross cash flow. It should have and it could have and it would have been a perfect rental property except for one major problem. This woman had lost her job. She was continuing to collect the rent because she was actually living off of the rent, but she stopped paying the mortgage. Four days, it's always four days by the way, four days before the first Tuesday of the month when the bank was gonna foreclose on her, I knocked on her door. Hello, can I help you? I am here to help you. 
well, what can you do? There's no time. They're going to foreclose me. How can you help me? They're going to foreclose me. There's no time. What can you do? They're going to foreclose me. How can you help me? Here's what I can do. I can stop the foreclosure. I can reinstate your loan. I can catch up your mortgage payments. I can make your mortgage payments for you going forward, and I can even repair all your credit. Well, that's amazing. What's the catch? You simply have to hand the deed, which is ownership of the property, to me. And she said, deal. Why in the world did she say deal? Because in four days, she's losing the house. That was a done deal. But she wasn't just going to lose the house. She was going to get a little bonus to go along with it. And this is what I told her next. The bonus is called what? A foreclosure. And you don't want a foreclosure. A foreclosure is the atomic bomb of credit hits. It's the big one. It's the beginning of a 10-year nightmare that starts with the sheriff and his deputies dragging you and your family and all of your possessions to the curb in front of your friends and neighbors. It's 10 years of dealing with the IRS potentially garnishing your wages to collect an a 1099 that could be issued against you for up to the full value of your loan. It's 10 years of having the lender potentially file a deficiency judgment lawsuit against you for up to the full value of the home. It's 10 years of dealing with creditors calling you, hounding you day and night to collect on the judgment from the lawsuit. It's 10 years of not being able to buy another home, not being able to buy a car, not being able to get a credit card, not being able to open certain bank accounts or even rent certain apartments or even get certain jobs. In other words, it's a bullet to the head and nobody wants all that. And I stopped all of that from happening to her and she was thrilled. And the bank was thrilled. They didn't want the house back. They're not in the house business. They just wanted their money. So I gave them their money. And the tenants were thrilled. They didn't want to get kicked out of the house. They just wanted to keep renting the house. So I let them keep renting it from me. But mostly I was thrilled because for $4,500, which is what it cost me to reinstate this loan, I now own this beautiful $150,000 house, came with a loan, came with $40,000 of equity, all mine came with tenants paying me $1,600 a month rent. After I pay Bank of America $1,100 for the mortgage payment, $500 goes back in my pocket. And if you think that's cool, my wife owned and I own about $20 million worth of these properties. Some of them took small amounts of money like this. Honestly, most of them took more money than this. Some of them, however, took no money at all. So let me ask you guys a question by a quick show of hands. How many of you would like me to walk you step by step by step through how to do this deal? Let's do a quick poll of the audience. All right, we're all out of time. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being obnoxious, aren't I? Okay, we're almost out of time. We're almost done, I promise we're almost done. But, um, but I'm gonna finish. Y'all you, you wanna hear this, I'm gonna, I, I love this strategy. Obviously, this is one of the 12 strategies that we use and we teach. You're, like I said, you're not gonna learn this stuff watching HGTV. Uh, but I'll bet you haven't figured out why I love this so much. You're probably like saying, oh, you're making 500 a month. Yeah, that's not it. $500 a month is not going to help me uh, uh, or, or affect my life or lifestyle in the slightest. That's, that's not it. So, so why do I love this so much? The reason I love this so much is by doing this over and over and over again, over the last 18 years, my wife and I were able to accumulate a portfolio that's now worth $20 million of houses. Right? A lot of them have been paid off, in fact. You know, mo most of them is 20 more than in just equity, I should say. Um, and, and the reason I love this is it, it just within the last year, it's been a pretty good year. In fact, there's been a pretty good two years, right? The housing shortage, pandemic. Just within the last year, my portfolio went up in value by more than 30%. So just within the last year, my wife and I became more than $3 million richer from having done this thing over and over again, this thing that required little or no money and no credit. That's what I love about this. This is a strategy that can enable anybody, even if they have no money or no credit, to become multi, multi, multi-millionaires. I don't care how much money you have or how much credit you have, that's not gonna get you where you wanna go. You don't have enough, right? You don't have enough credit, you don't have enough money to buy houses, enough houses, to become a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. You're never gonna get there. You're gonna have to do it a different way. This is the way you do it. And when I realized the wealth potential of this, I actually made one additional tweak to this strategy. I no longer buy these houses in my name. 
In fact, I no longer buy these houses in my company's name. Now when I buy these houses, I prefer to buy them in my IRA. How many of you are aware that you could do this transaction with your IRA? Okay, for the rest of you, you know you can do this transaction with your IRA. Yeah, in fact, one of the sponsors of Texas Reads is a company called Quest Trust IRA, based right here in Texas. They can set it up just like they set up for me. Come to the workshop, they'll set it up for you. You can do this with your IRA. So what happens when your IRA does this deal? Well, your IRA issues the $4,500 reinstatement fee to Bank of America, and then the deed to the property transfers to your IRA. Every month, the property manager deposits $1,600 of rent into your IRA. Every month, your IRA automatically issues a check for $1,100 back to Bank of America to pay the mortgage, and $500 goes back into the IRA. But that's not the good part. What's the good part? Over the next 25 years, this property will double in value, and it'll double again. And even with very conservative appreciation rates, it'll almost double a third time. Something interesting happens to the loan over the next 25 years. What happens to the loan? It gets completely paid off by the tenants. Thank you very much, tenants. In other words, every time my IRA does this deal, my IRA ultimately ends up owning an asset worth about a million bucks that by then I own free and clear. And because my IRA is also a Roth IRA, when I sell this asset in retirement, 100% of the proceeds are tax-free. Tax -free. Did you all just see what I did? I just showed you how to turn a $4,500 IRA into $1 million tax-free doing one deal, one time. Helping a woman out of a horrible situation, helping a bank from taking a property back they didn't want back, helping tenants stay in a property they wanted to stay in, all that, just doing it once. The average retired person at the age of 65 has a net worth of $62,000. It's pathetic. If you just did this one deal, one time in your life, you'd be 25 times richer than the average retired person just doing it once. But I'll tell you something else I've observed over the years. I've never seen somebody do this deal once. 95% of the people will never do this deal. And 100% of the people that do it once, then what do they do? Then they do it again. And then what do they do? Then they do it again. And then they do it again and again and again. And 18 years later, they're standing in front of a room full of people talking about all the times they do it. So try this again. How many of you would like me to walk you step by step by step? through how to do this deal. Let's do a quick poll of the audience. Okay, I'm gonna walk you step by step by step how to find this deal, how to get it under contract, the exact words to say, we just went through the atomic bomb close, right? Which contract to use, which attorney and title company to close it at, and how to go through all the operational steps for doing this deal. So I'm gonna walk you step by step by step through all of that stuff. But it's gonna take me about three days, so we're gonna to have to do the rest at the workshop. So there we are. And by the way, obviously that's a pretty cool strategy. That's just one of the 12 different strategies. I'm gonna teach you how to renovate houses for free, how to buy houses that are even underwater where people owe more money, how to help people buy houses even if they can't get a loan from the bank. All 12 strategies, all 65 marketing methods, 10 different closes. Hey, can partner, remember that, partner, leverage my money and my resources access our funding to fund your deals. Thousands, and I mean thousands, and I mean thousands of real estate investors launch their careers at this workshop, The Real Deal Texans Teach in Texans How to Invest in Texas, and all comes with a starter kit. I'm actually gonna tell you, there's a bunch of goodies in the starter kit, but um, Olivia, can I help you, get you to help me out with something for a minute? Can you walk up here for a second? And I'm actually gonna get you to, can you hold that poster up? Okay, so I am a, uh, an engineer by trade. I'm actually an inventor. Uh, numerous inventions, uh, software programs. Um, this little gadget up here, it's called the MacGyver Broadcasting System. Um, and this is another one of my inventions. So um, what is this? I said earlier, real estate investing is not that complicated. There's just a lot of details. It's not a mile deep, it's a mile wide, right? Learning real estate is really more like learning a language than learning a skill. It's not complicated, it's just a bazillion little details. So I thought it would be interesting to take all of the details and put them on a poster. So these are the 273 things you need to know to be a real estate investor. 
Can you try to hold that closer to the camera if you could get it on there just so some of the people at home can maybe sort of kind of see it? All right, well, at any rate, so we have all the different strategies, all the different marketing methods, all of the different negotiations and closes, all the operation stuff, power teams, corporate structures, all the financing strategies, all the analysis and due diligence steps. I put the on this poster, it shows how all the pieces fit together. Uh, and then uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you, you get the poster. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, when you get the starter kit, the last step of the starter kit invites you to join the private moderated online Facebook group, which you definitely wanna do because that's where you can post your deals, that's where you can get access to deals, money, me, so partners, people like me, uh, Olivia's on there. Uh, so that's uh, the last step of the starter kit is you join the private moderated group online, um, which is also part of the starter kit for free. And if you join the group tonight, I, I assume, Olivia, do we have some of those posters? We do, okay, so if you join the group tonight and you show them outside, hey, I'm a member, uh, they'll give you a poster. So there's a little bribe to get you all to join. Uh, plus the poster is really cool as well. So the starter kit, by the way, includes a lot of goodies. Obviously the workshop is part of the starter kit. There's also a money resource guide. There's a training program you get with the starter kit. And then another one of my inventions, uh, I call it a business plan generator. So you're all different. You're all different. Some of you want to do this full time, some part time, some active, some passive. Some of you have more time, some of you have more money. Some of you are just getting started. Some of you are already getting started, uh, have already gotten started. Some of you want to do residential, some want to do commercial. You know, there's not one size fits all, right? Um, so what I did is I created a little computer program. It's in the starter kit. You, you fill out a little survey and it kind of talks about kind of where you are and what you're trying to do and then you fill out this little survey and then you push a button, it will generate for you a personalized business plan based on your goals. So it's a business plan generator. And then you come to the workshop, I will teach you how to implement your business plan. So that's kind of a really cool uh, uh, a little invention uh, that I created and it's all in the starter kit as well. So pick the location and or date that works for you. Uh, come live or come online. Um, and also the commercial workshop coming up in September. Let me do a quick poll of the audience. Um, how many of you would like to attend live? Come to the event live, let's do a poll of hands. How many of you would like to attend online? How many online? What's that? It's in, a, an, it's in a hotel in South Austin. So it is in Austin, but it's about an hour away. So you're gonna to have to drive an hour to do that. I, I, we call it Central Texas. We tried to get as close to San Antonio by South Austin, but yeah. So you have it, but you can do online or live or a combination. Uh, sometimes I would, I would recommend if you can come live. It, you, you know, it's just more personable. We get to interact online, but we also get to interact a little better live. Okay, we have, we have desk tables, it's, it's more spacious. Um, doing it live as well. Um, so I recommend if you can come live, definitely you're gonna wanna come live. Um, I'll tell you just to set some expectations, uh, the, the meeting is 24 hours spread over three days. It's weighted on Friday, Saturday. So the meeting, I start talking at nine. I want you to get there at 8.30 because from 8.30 to nine, we're gonna be doing some case studies, warm up, questions, answers, stuff like that. Then I start talking at nine. On Friday and it's Saturday, we're gonna go late so that we can end early on Sunday. So we'll probably go 7, 7.30, 8, 8 o'clock. Some of it depends on you and how many questions you ask. We're gonna do a live property tour. We're literally gonna have people walking through houses, showing you deals, answering questions. I don't know exactly how long that'll take because it's kind of a tour du jour uh, and, uh, and that's, that's how it is. I do expect you to show up, bring a notebook, I expect you to take a lot of notes. I expect you to ask a lot of questions. If you're not gonna pay attention, then please don't even bother to come. Okay, and I mean that, and, and, and even online. Uh, you know, in the Zoom meeting, it's a little harder to stay engaged. Turn on your camera, ask questions, stay engaged. If you're just gonna tune this out and go do something else, just don't bother, right? Just watch a Netflix marathon. You could probably cram a whole Netflix marathon in, in the same amount of time it's gonna take to you know, go through this workshop and you'll have a lot of fun. 
you're not going to learn anything, but you'll be entertained, right? If you're just looking for entertainment, watch Netflix. If you want your life change, show up on time, bring a notebook, ask questions, stay engaged, right? And, and that's what I'm going to ask you to do. Um, so to get it, just uh, click on the link on the screen, uh, or if you guys are online, there should be a link below in the comments, questions, or somewhere around uh, where you're watching us uh, online. Um, and uh, you can also type this uh, website, Texas Starter Kit, if you can't do either of those other things. Uh, and that's basically it. So a couple of other comments real quick. We will take some questions as well. Um, a lot of people ask, where can I get copies of your presentations and how do I stay engaged? If you want to join us on social media, we are on YouTube, we have a podcast, we are on Instagram, uh, we have a, a, a Facebook channel. Um, just look for Texas Rias. Pick your, pick your social media poison and, and join us online. We do post pictures and, and copies of our presentation. All these market updates, a lot of you taking pictures, you can, you can get the, the pictures every week uh, by just subscrip subscribing to our social media, so please do that. Um, I talked about everything in the starter kit, so I think I covered that pretty well. A couple of other questions real quick. How much experience do I need to do this? On the residential workshop, about 75% of the attendees are newbies, so that's fine. About 25% of the attendees are already experienced investors, but they tend to be uh, kind of the one-trick ponies. They come to learn some of the more advanced strategies that only we teach and some of the advanced marketing methods. Uh, can I bring a partner or city of an other? Here's a, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be very strong on this point. Bring your significant other. Use force if necessary. I don't recommend using a gun, but get them there however you can. Now here's why I'm saying this, and 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 listen to me, guys. Every time I've done one of these workshops, here's what happens. Every time, people come to the workshop without their significant other. They learn how to flip houses using creative real estate. They go out and find a deal, they get it under contract, and then they go home to their significant other and they say, honey, guess what? I'm buying a house. And how does that go over? Like a big fat lead balloon, okay? You're wasting your time. They're going to shoot you in your foot. So just bring them to the workshop. I promise I will make it interesting I've had numerous situations where people have dragged their significant other against their will to their workshop, and the significant other is the one who got so excited, they're the ones that took the ball and ran with it. So I'm just a piece of advice, do everything you can to get your significant other there. What if the event is rescheduled? Highly doubt that's possible, but I'll tell you what we're gonna do. A day or two before the event, we're gonna call, text, or email you to RSVP you. Specifically, we want to know how many people are coming live versus how many people are coming online. For people coming live, we have tables. We even have lunches that are brought in. So we need to get a pretty good, accurate count. So how many people are coming live or online? We will verify, confirm that with you a day or two before the event. If you have a scheduling problem or if we have a scheduling problem, we will reschedule with you right at that time. So, right, and, and uh, uh, so we'll, we'll do that right before the event. How do I know this is the real deal? You know, my best advice is don't listen to me, listen to others. Ask somebody who's done it already. Now, if you wanna come and learn from me, come learn from me. Right now it's free, so there's not even any risk learning from me. If you don't wanna learn from me, I won't be offended, but I will tell you, whatever you do, don't waste your time going to what I call the traveling circus road shows. You don't need and do not want to waste your time and money learning from out-of-state gurus how to invest in Texas, right? Find other local experts to work with. If you'd like to work with us, come work with us. Now, speaking of what other people have to say, if you would like to see over a thousand handwritten reviews, you can go to that link right there. We invite everybody, if you had the slightest <laughs> reservation, go check it out for yourself. We invite everybody that comes to the workshop to give us review, and it's handwritten. Write down everything you learn, whatever you have to say. I don't care, good, bad, or whatever. Tell people what you learned at the event. Good, bad, or whatever. What do you think of it? We actually scan 100% of the reviews that we receive. We post 100% of them on the internet for the entire universe to see. 
Now, why in the world would I post every single handwritten, unedited, scanned review for the whole world to see on the internet? I challenge you to go look for yourself. And here's what you're going to see. 99 out of 100 all say the same thing. Oh my God, this was literally a life-changing event. I mean, literally a life-changing event, right? 99 out of 100, you don't believe me? Go look for yourself. You cannot fake handwritten reviews, right? The only reviews I would ever believe are real reviews from real people that are scanned and handwritten with the name and everything you can verify for yourself. Go look and see a thousand of them. Uh, where do I get my tickets? When you get the starter kit, there's an option right in the starter kit. It'll send you an email, but there's an option right in the starter kit that it'll actually put the links to it right into your uh, calendar, whatever you use, Google Calendar, et cetera. What if I want more help? The last step of the starter kit is it invites you to join the private online network. Definitely join the online network. You get a poster, and that's where you can interact with me and all the members, get access to deals, money, resources, ask questions, et cetera, on an ongoing basis. So that is it, folks. Uh, love to have you there. Love to have you at the starter kit. Thank you so much for joining. Sounds like we got a fantastic response, so that is fantastic. If you didn't do it already, go to the link, go to the QR code. If you're online, click on the link below. Or if you can't figure any of that out, just go to texasstarterkit.com. And we will see you guys at the workshop. Did everybody learn a lot tonight? Thank you, guys. Awesome. So I am going to stop.